Veritas! What's up, baby? Good morning. How are you this morning? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing good. Life's great. Um, just blessed to be surrounded by a legend like yourself because I know you do a lot oh, with the Tarkov on. community. And uh, that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to go straight into the hype off. Uh, the, the, the hype off. Um, first, I, wanna, I want you to introduce yourself. Where you stream? Where you do what you do? How long you been doing it? Yeah, I mean, I'm Veritas. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I've been streaming full time for, Jesus, I don't even know now. Uh, it's either three years or six years or five years. I don't know. I stopped <laughs> counting after a while. It's like when I hit 30, I stopped keeping track. Um, I was a professional software engineer for a decade. Um, started making YouTube videos back in the day uh, during the, the height of the PUBG era. And uh, one day decided to stream. After three months, I was partnered, and uh, yeah, I've just been kind of doing it ever since. Here we are. Here we are. Well, you've done a phenomenal job over whatever how many years it's been. Um, you have done some really cool projects, and that's what I kind of wanted to get into here today, but also talk about uh, the upbringing of Veritas and where you kind of came from. So I want to first off and just say thank you for being on the podcast. We've had um, some really good guests. We've had, you know, great people like yourself. We've had Jesse. Um, some really cool people, and I just want to say thank you for being on the podcast. It really means the world. Um, I don't know if you remember this, or, well, you do remember this, but I've been watching you for a pretty long time. You're actually one of the first streamers I watched on Tarkov Twitch, um, and I used to watch you when you were doing, like, the, the programming of, um, Battle Buddy while yeah. you also streamed. I loved it, dude. I fucking loved it. Um, and the fact that, like I said, you've been on this podcast, you're being on this podcast really means the world to me. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you and, uh... Well, cheers to you. I, I know you have yeah, your coffee. Cheers, cheers brother. Um, cheers, buddy. No, I appreciate it. Thank you for thank you for having me. I, I, I got to say a real quick backstory. Mm -hmm. Randomly, I was going back looking. I was looking to send you a message. I don't yeah. remember what about. Um, was like scrolling through, and then I ended up typing in your name uh -huh. into Twitter, and all of a sudden I see a DM from you from a year <laughs> ago. A year ago. Yeah. You asking me about the podcast yep. i'm like oh i'd never seen it i yeah. felt so bad no it was, I was okay like, Buddy. no it was okay because i was uh, so when i first started the podcast i was looking at you know other podcasts in the in the space you know just to just to see what i could do to better myself right and i really like i have heavily inspiration i told Jess jesse that i have heavily heavily inspired with the podcast and I, I really love it so if there was one guy that i could contact it would it was you so that's why i contacted you no worries about that no don't feel bad we're here today and we get to talk about it that's the best thing right. about this okay right. um i do want to start off um not only do you play tarkov you make tarkov videos uh you know how to play guitar you've co you've coded and made battle buddy um you also do variety streams from time to time which uh funny thing is that lawnmower simulator is like some of the best content on twitch right now i should point out um you're an, you're an incredibly smart person and you're a good person i have to ask though how is veritas how are you today uh how have you been streaming wise how is it oh, I've, I've been doing good lately I've been I, this morning i had my I had therapy this morning so mm. i feel i'm feeling i'm feeling good Let's feeling go. zen. uh but uh but yeah i mean i i've been i've been on the upswing mm -hmm. there was a period of time where um i wasn't wasn't doing so hot yeah, uh, and it largely had to do with just being burnt out on Tarkov, yeah. burnt out on this like kind of endless cycle that I would get into, uh, yep. and um, but kind of broke out of that, which then you know switching over from playing one game, maining mm -hmm. one game, growing on one game, and then switching over over to variety is is a uh, is a challenge. And, yes. you know, just dealing with all of the little things, you know, the ego um, mm -hmm. of seeing the numbers go down, dealing with that, dealing with people. Mm -hmm. being douchebags yeah. you know talking shit and uh you know coming to terms with understanding the the this weird relationship we have as content creators with mm -hmm. our audiences um it's it's so much more complicated than anybody Can, realizes yeah no 100 um, and then on top of that right what, what you just stated is like you get people that will come in i'm sure you get this all the time where's tarkov you know, like I remember when I switched to Helldivers for a day and TikTok chat was like, you ain't playing Tarkov? What'd you do? You rage quit? You you can't take the game anymore? It's like, brother, can I not play something else? You know what I'm saying? I'm sure that that has a big effect on you too. It's like, do I go back just for everybody else? But then you got to do what's good for you, you know? 
there's there's the mixture of like the whether you have fun with the game or not is yeah. one thing whether you have fun playing the game in front of an audience is another thing whether you have fun playing the game in front of a specific subset of the audience <laughs> is another thing um and and whether or not then you have to deal with like you said the 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 like where's tarkov which you depending on how you read in what voice you read that message yeah. is it where's tarkov or oh where's tarkov yeah right you can interpret it in different ways um and then so you have the whole like no fuck you like i want to play another game i played tarkov you know i played tarkov i streamed it for five years straight mm -hmm. over 40 hours a week ten thousand plus hours yeah it's like i want to take a break and then you have the people who are like man i really miss you playing tarkov so then you feel guilty <laughs> about not playing so it's like i feel guilty about being happy that yep. makes me not happy so dude it's <laughs> it's an endless cycle no i get it i get what you're saying completely and i haven't even done variety so i'm not even there yet veritas i'll tell you what i'm gonna need like two therapists okay you mentioned therapy this morning i shit you not like my therapist has heard about tarkov more than i'd like to admit and she just doesn't understand she's like what do you mean? Like you're you're dying in this video game and it's making you mad? I'm like, yeah. And she's like, why does it make you mad? I'm like, I don't fucking know. To be honest with you, you know. And I tell her that all the fucking time. But um, it's it's funny. The therapy has been a been a blessing for me, and I'm glad that you touched on that. Every I feel like everybody. I always tell people, I don't think everybody needs a therapist, but everybody everyone should have one because even the happiest people in the world need somebody to talk to. You know, and I feel yeah, like man. that's very important. So. I'm glad that you touched on that. Um, we're going to get away from therapy, though. We're going to kind of touch on the coffee subject. Um, I don't think I know this. Are you a big coffee guy? I mean, I, I do know this now, but yeah, big coffee yeah, guy. I'm a, I'm a pretty big coffee guy. <laughs> uh, not as not as much as I used to be. Mm -hmm. um, there was a period of time where, you know, I had like a, one of those prosumer espresso machines, big chrome guy mm -hmm. with all the these like nice custom wood knobs. And uh, <laughs> it was a... Uh, uh, Oh god, what was the brand? It was an Alexia. I forget uh, what the brand was, but anyway, uh, I yeah. used to be really into that. So I, you know, would be sitting pulling fifty shots of espresso. You take <laughs> you take a sip, dump it out, do it again. You know, just trying to get it just yeah. right. Uh, the first yeah. app, actually, the first app I ever made um, was like a companion app what? for espresso. You could like measure out like you could take a picture of, like the bag you yeah. know and say like okay you know i'm i'm gonna go do uh make this coffee and i'm grinding it to this thickness there was like you know uh all the information so for like cool. when it was when it was roasted yeah um what the like um how much you ground of it what what the actual like number of ounces you got after the afterwards mm -hmm. like it's super Dude. science nerd Coffee, you, yeah. you have the experience, Veritas. Well, I'm glad that you we can both share a cup of coffee here today. Um, coffee is a big part of my life. It probably shouldn't be because I'm addicted to it, but it, it is, you know. Um, I did want to point out your friend Jesse uh, mentioned he was a huge fan of coffee. I have to ask, have you taken any, uh, any tips from uh, Jesse Kazan? Because I know he likes to spread his coffee knowledge on a lot of people. No, I don't think, uh, I mean, <laughs> not to say I couldn't learn anything from him, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. but he's, 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 I think at the beginning of yeah. going deep into the, so yeah. he's got a ways to go before he's going to teach me, <laughs> That's teach fair. me something well, I don't I already know. <laughs> I didn't know how big of a coffee fan you were, so I'm glad to hear that you're a, you're a big coffee fan. I got to ask, what's, what's some of your favorite coffee? Do you have any favorite blends or anything? Um, no, I mean, I, I like, I, I prefer, um. I prefer light roast pretty much of anything because mm -hmm. I'm a coffee fiend and most people yeah. don't realize that the darker the roast, the less the caffeine. Yes. Yep. Um, you know, most people are like hardcore coffee. Like, yeah, the darker, you know, the yeah. better or whatever. But Put some uh, hair on I, your I, chest. It's like, brother, you yeah. ain't drinking as much caffeine as I am, brother. What do you mean? <laughs> you know? Yeah, dude. Um, so, but I mean, like literally all around the world, uh, it doesn't matter where mm -hmm. it's from. I, I, I can enjoy it. Um, it's awesome. And there's really, there's two kinds of coffee. There's fast food coffee as yeah. an input into like gasoline in your tank, right? It's like <laughs> yeah. diesel fuel. Yeah. It's it's a means to an end. And in that case, I'll go, you know, McDonald's, Dunkin' Donuts, just lots of cream and sugar, like whatever, yeah. you know. But um, 
if you make actual like good quality mm. coffee you grind it fresh like i always grind yep. everything fresh um that you can drink and really appreciate you can drink it black uh you know and it's it's actually is really good coffee is a lot closer to like a good tea in oh, terms really? of like you can taste yeah I, most of this stuff is like kind of bullshit like the wine sommelier like oh yeah, yeah hints of nutmeg and blah but like really though you can you can you can taste a lot yeah. there's some complexity in in well-made coffee it's not yeah. just hot bitter water yeah um yeah so there's uh i recommend if anybody people who said they don't like coffee mm -hmm. if all you've ever had is like the percolator coffee at your grandma's house um <laughs> or like mcdonald's coffee yeah go to go to a place where like the barista has blue hair or whatever right like the, <laughs> the most yeah. the most like um <sighs> yeah go to I one of the real saying. coffee yeah. nerdy kinds of places where their pants are really tight yeah and um <laughs> And the espresso machine looks like it should have like a Chevrolet logo yeah. on it, you know, because it's like a massive thing. Yeah. And and just get just get some uh, some some solid coffee yeah. from them, and uh, it might change your mind. One hundred percent. It's like going to a barbecue restaurant with the the chef being a, a a skinny white dude. It's like, bro, I know damn well that shit ain't banging in there, bro. I need some four hundred pound offensive lineman cooking my mac and cheese back there because you know that man likes to cook. You know, yeah. you know that man gets fat off of that, you know, so, oh, that's funny. Yeah, so I'm thinking, you said you don't necessarily have a preference. I, I do grind my own coffee, which you said um, if there's any but anybody in here that doesn't like coffee, that wants to like coffee, one of the best things I've ever done for my coffee collection is get my own grinder. It yeah, is man. night and day difference. Like, the, the pre-ground shit is not the greatest, you know, and I've started to grind my own stuff, and man. It's like life and death difference. Like it, like, so good, so so. Yeah, good. the moment the moment you go, so the moment you grind the coffee, there's yeah. like gases in it, and it basically yeah. just starts outgassing. And it actually there's like um, oxidation that happens. Yeah, you know, the equivalent of like rust, right? Mm -hmm. But like it 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 just there's something that happens where there's a mm. timer ticking. Yeah, when you when you when you uh, grind it, and so I just prefer to do it myself. Yeah, um, but but also. What I think is even more kind of important to the coffee thing, at least for me, mm -hmm. is like the ritual. There's something about it that I just think is like, it's nice yes. to get up in the morning and like grind the coffee. You smell it nice and yes. fresh. You you know, I put put it in, in however you make it, you know, whether it's French press or whatever. Um, and, and then just the ritual is just as much of a part of the enjoyment of exactly. coffee than the thing that you're actually drinking exactly you know? and there's so many people that like i drink so much coffee that people think it's a part of my personality and it 100 percent is like i made a podcast called coffee with gino to try and encapsulate like the feeling that you get from a cup of coffee that morning feeling that you can wake up and and, and sit back relax and enjoy the enjoy the podcast or enjoy the cup of coffee i 100 percent agree um, I do got to ask, though, outside of coffee, um, I know many people have their preferences. Is there anything that you drink specifically to get caffeine if you don't have a cup of coffee or are you only coffee guy? I mean, I'll drink coffee. I'll drink tea. I, I'm not mm -hmm. into like if I have tea, it's mm -hmm. going to be like English breakfast with milk and sugar. Just because <laughs> like that's what my grandma used to make for yeah. me. You know, I know like all my friends from the UK mm -hmm. cringe, but uh, <laughs> but I mean, like or like basically any energy drink yeah uh i'll drink now the i'll tell you the best energy drink and, and you can't you can't get it anywhere except for the only place i've ever seen it is really? skydiving drop zones and indoor skydiving wind uh, indoor skydiving wind tunnels yeah because fun fact i worked at one um for multiple years yeah i've got like thousands of hours of, of oh, that's indoor so skydiving time but it's a brand called go fast oh i and i love i love their their branding and the art style of their cans yeah. or whatever that stuff is jet fuel really and it will melt your steel beams bro it's like <laughs> if i like it's it, you know yeah. it comes in kind of one of those tall cans like a, yeah. like a monster um and it shouldn't it should come in <laughs> in a tiny red bull because if i drink now and i don't get anything from caffeine anymore yeah but it's a combination of whatever jacked up chemicals i'm sure are killing me <laughs> um and a ton of caffeine that yeah 
100 percent. yeah i mean it's like when the four locos first came out i heard they had like 500 megs of caffeine i mean realistically if we're talking about a lot of caffeine nowadays i don't know if you've seen panera bread just came out with their uh charge drinks did you hear that it's killing people yeah multiple people died yeah and it's and it's lar it's largely because there were people who otherwise would not drink mm -hmm. energy drinks because they have heart problems or whatever and, yeah and they're unaware that it's basically an energy drink mm -hmm. they were they thought it was kind of like a you know sort of a fruity lemonade yeah not not a lemonade cocaine yeah. <laughs> mixture you know so yeah Yo, let me go get my mac and cheese from panera bread and die of a heart attack later because i i didn't really it has like 300 megs of caffeine it's crazy um that that <laughs> it's so fucking terrible for you um i do gotta ask so with coffee we often have breakfast uh what's some of your favorite breakfast items i've been asking guests this and i always love hearing their answers breakfast is like one of my probably my favorite genre of I love food breakfast yes i'm never hungry in the morning though yep that's why you gotta That's have it for problem. dinner. That's why you gotta have it for dinner. Breakfast Hell yeah. for dinner is That's what I'm go saying. To. That's what I'm saying. Um, I mean, I I like I like everything that isn't eggs. I'm a weirdo. I just mm -hmm. don't like eggs. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, man, I love. Actually, my, one of my favorite things uh to get, and there's a really nice coffee shop down mm -hmm. the road. Um. It's me, me and my wife on Saturday mornings. We we used to go every Saturday, yeah. and then COVID hit, and it kind of screwed up our schedule. But last week, last weekend, we we went for the first time in a while, um, and we I always get a nice espresso. Um, I basically get a, a latte because uh, mm -hmm. they have a really good espresso there, and they have a cinnamon roll crepe. It's oh. basically like you know a crepe with um, almost kind of like a sweet sort of creamy sauce mm -hmm. with cinnamon sugar uh oh like they're sort of homemade um whipped cream dude oh, oh my gosh oh, okay so yeah, so a, a crepe uh i've never i've only had one before and i'll be honest it just, i'd rather have a pancake so i i mean i guess i gotta try this place that you like the whole conversation well, what did you have as a crepe though what did you have because like, you can get it like, was like a you, grape one and I don't think that was nah, good. Dog. No, because you can get you can get like savory crepes. Yeah, you can get you know you can get them with um, like lots of vegetables in them. You can get them with mm -hmm. uh, almost kind of like how omelets. You can have like a million yeah. different kinds of omelets. I prefer the crepes that are like it was like a dessert, mm -hmm. which is you okay. know I like I it's like eating pancakes without syrup. Yep. It's like having a non sweet dessert crepe. Like, yeah. Yeah, so you gotta you gotta get get some like okay. get some cinnamon sugar, okay. yeah, some I, sweet on there. I need to stop. So I always just thought like I don't know what it was. I went to a restaurant that did crepes, and I was like, dude, a grape crepe just sounds great right now. And it was absolutely it wasn't the greatest. It like I don't know what it was. Your that one sounds so good though. That one sounds so good. Um, I do gotta ask though, what's the best meal of the day? I think we've already answered this question. I this is the first time I've asked this to a guest. Best meal of the day: breakfast, lunch, or dinner? I mean, is it a cop out to say breakfast for dinner? <laughs> no, it's not. That's it. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. how I would have answered this question. Do you know it's gonna be a good day when you have bacon, sausage, pancakes. You know, like for dinner, man. Oh my God. My mom makes these crispy crowns. I don't know if you know what crispy crowns are. They're like tater tots, but like put into a crown shape. Not a crown, like crown as in like king crown, but like a, I don't like know. They have the smiley face. Kind of uh, that shape, but without like the, the smile shape. That yeah, shape, okay. but no smile. Okay. It's just a crispy mm. crown. They're so good. They are so right. good. I love them. Um, do you like do you, do you like um, real maple syrup? I because I I'm I'm a weirdo. I, I'm from New England, mm -hmm. uh, so you would think that you know I would like real maple syrup. Yeah. I prefer like regular syrup over yeah. over the real maple. I don't know why it's just it's so sweet yeah. the real maple syrup <laughs> yeah. that it's like kind of painful. No, I get what you're saying. It hurts my um, throat. Like it, like it feels like I don't know what it is. The maple syrup like hurts my throat. It's good. I will say I like the just like the normal, like Aunt Jemima or whatever the fucking word is. The butter flavor. It has like yeah, butter man, and it. That's that's the shit. 
No, that you no. know you know what was actually really good. I, I wouldn't buy it, yep. but I'm nostalgic for the 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 flavor. My grandfather was diabetic, yeah. so at my grandmother's house, whenever I'd stay over my grandmother's house, she'd always make pancakes and she'd always make them in like a motorcycle shape or whatever. It was always yeah. in different shapes, and so she had like the sugar free um, oh, syrup. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And I don't know why, but I I almost want to say I like it better. I don't, but I kind of no, do i don't know sometimes i'm just specific, in the mood no i get what you're saying it's kind of like the, like a diet coke light, compared light, to like light a, sugar sorry light, light syrup sugar. Is what okay it is. i had a sugar free one at, uh you know what perkins is i don't know if everybody has a perkins where are you no. from again veritas uh close to boston uh, in, uh, oh, okay New Hampshire. okay so yeah there probably ain't no perkins up there perkins is like a um like a breakfast it's kind of like an ihop but like for old people so if that makes so any an sense you, yeah, but for like older people than IHOP, so it's like it's like a retirement home, um. But instead so IHOP of IHOP on a Sunday afternoon yeah, rather than on the church. Thursday night, yes. which is a bunch of cracked out drunk yeah. college kids. Yeah, yeah. No, it's not that. It's not. It's not Waffle House. It's it's like an IHOP, but for much older people. That's what it is. Um, it's pretty great experience. But yeah, Perkins, um, they have the sugar free syrup. It's pretty good, I guess. I mean. There's some sugar-free stuff that's good, some not. Um, I wanted to touch on the gaming subject, though. We're both gamers, so, you know, I I, I know you're a big Tarkov fan, or used to be, um, but I want to ask... I, I still uh, am. I still am. <laughs> I, I know. I had to I had to put that in there. I wanted to ask. Um, I want to ask you about how you started your gaming career. Uh, what consoles games did you start with? Well, take us back to the day, Veritas. Um, I had... My, my dad had a, an Atari... Mm -hmm. But I, I don't, I don't remember ever playing it much. I have a feeling like he, he got it like slightly later than mm -hmm. what I started with. But I started with Nintendo, just like the okay. NES. Uh, then got a Super Nintendo. Um, then I had an N sixty four. Then Goat. I got a PlayStation. Then I got a PlayStation two. Then I got an Xbox. And I got okay. an Xbox three sixty. And that Xbox 360 is was the last console. Really? I still okay. have the Xbox 360. And then I got PC gaming, and now it's like yeah, I it's have just... no desire to get another console. No, I don't blame you. What, what are some of the games that you started on, on like back in the Nintendo days? I mean, you know, all the Mario, and, Super yep. Mario games, um, the side scroller. Uh, oh, bro, one of my one of my songs is yeah. called. Uh, it's either you can do it or we can do it. Mm -hmm. And that literally came from when we were little. My sister would sit and watch me play. Mm -hmm. And I was playing Super Mario, getting to the last couple of levels. My heart's racing. You know, the the, the, <laughs> yeah. the side scroller where it would auto scroll. You're on the ship and they're shooting like the, the bullets. <laughs> yeah. and, and like the music is scary and like my heart would be racing. Yep. I'd be like seven or six or whatever. And we'd be like... You can do it. You can do. We had like a chant and everything <laughs> awesome. to try to. And that song is literally just based on like my childhood uh, so trying sick. to play old school games yeah. like that. Um, but yeah, I mean Mario. Um, God, I don't even remember like what games were on Nintendo. I, I can't what, picture. Forget what Gibbon said last week that got chat speaking about how they forgot about it. I, I'd have to see if anybody in chat can memorize it. Gibbon said one last week. A lot of people say GoldenEye, clearly, you know, I feel like that's a, a pretty pretty common one, right? Yeah, on N64, um, GoldenEye. Yeah. I, um, Contra, I just pulled up a list. Contra okay. was one of my favorites. Um, let's see, what else? Excite Bike was incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, let's see, uh, the OG Donkey Kong. Okay. Um, yeah, pretty, some, pretty some, good some pretty good classics in there. But, but N64... I'll always remember the day that I got an N64 mm -hmm. and with Super Mario 64. That oh was like the first 3D game yep. that, I don't know, man. I feel like that was like one of the most pivotal yeah. turning points of, of playing that I, game and just being lost in that world. Yeah, like, I got what you're saying. And you had to plug in the, the three different wire points. I remember that. I played by, I played the Nintendo 64. You had the, the white wire, the red wire, and the yellow wire. You know, you had to pl plug them all in or the audio was jacked. <laughs> so, yep. yeah, I know. I, I remember those days. I played... um. Uh, some one of the Mario Karts, and I had nobody to play against, so I just played against AI. I mean, it, it wasn't much online back then, if any, right? So I, I don't think you could have. Yeah, I don't think you I, could. There, there was, I remember Sega. I want to say Sega Genesis had something called Sega Channel. 
oh. which you would plug in your telephone sorry not telephone uh, the cable yeah the cable wire <laughs> and you could basically get it was like almost like netflix where you yeah. pay and you could play games that you effectively were, were like downloading it from online mm -hmm. over cable um but otherwise yeah i mean I, I i also had dreamcast i forgot i had sega genesis and i had a yeah. dreamcast um but yeah i mean it wasn't until xbox really okay. that i was wasn't playing online um but um but yeah dude i i think probably the the most pivotal game though um for me would have to be ocarina of time that ocarina was until time. recently clear and above the best game of all time the go really? the greatest yeah until, Wait, so until you say until last year what what what's last year Elden ring outer wilds i've never played Outer Wilds. bro they, okay I, I cannot stress enough i just got a message from somebody yeah um let me see if i if i can even find it outer um, wilds is what it's called who's it made by yeah dude what was that who's, who's it made it, by yeah who's it made by do you know um i don't remember i don't remember the name it, it, it was like originally it started off as like a college project for this really? for for the oh, yeah it was sick. kind of like sort of an indie game yeah um yeah i forget i forget the the specifics but somebody just recently sent me a message saying hey i listened to your uh your recommendation oh okay yeah they said i'm reaching out to tell you that you truly have changed my life with the recommendation <laughs> to play outer wilds i finished the game last night and bawled my eyes out for three hours oh. afterwards it's truly a game you can only experience one time and that's the saddest part of finishing the game um yeah it was an amazing experience i'm looking for dude th there's literally like there's like you know the year zero and there's like bc and ad yeah i have like my life until i played outer wilds and then like my life afterwards dude it's um, that good I, I i like called my dad told him i loved him like oh my god like like genuinely yeah and, and here's the thing you cannot yeah. um don't look up anything about it okay don't just, look up anything about it, it. If, if anything, um, maybe watch one of the trailers like on Steam, mm -hmm. but, but don't, don't, you just don't want anything spoiled, anything. Okay. Um, how much is did, it? Like, do you, you know? like, <sighs> like, I'm not a big story, 15, story game 15 guy. 15 bucks 15 or something. Bucks? Yeah, I'd play it's that. It's not even, it's not even like about a story. Oh. Like there's no dialogue. Oh. It's. Oh, I mean, it, it. It's hard to describe. Yeah, without there's like spoiling a, it. There's like right? a message. Yeah. And less about like a story. Uh huh. It's about perspective. Okay. It makes you um, think. It's like one of those games that makes bro, you think. I, mean, I I had um. I have like a clip saved mm -hmm. of me finishing the game, and literally, it's like the credits are rolling, and I actually streamed it without my camera on. Um, for most of it, just to like oh kind of God. immerse myself yeah. in the game, and I have a clip of of my stream where the credits are rolling and the music is playing, and I switch over to like my camera full screen, and there's just tears down my face, dude. dude. And I showed it for like three seconds, and I just went back to full screen game. It's dude, dude it's such a beautiful okay. fucking game. Um, okay, it, it's really hard to describe. It's really yeah. I, the saddest thing is is that like I, I'm looking forward to. 10 years from now when I've mm -hmm. forgotten most of the specific details about like what to do in the game and how to like yeah. so that I can get a semblance of rediscovering it mm -hmm. uh, because yeah you can't okay you can play it again but it's just not the same well th this is a great build up to the next question I gotta ask if one game gives you the most amount of nostalgia what would it be would it be Outer Wilds like if you play like the music like for me for example Oof. The Black Ops 2 lobby music was just something severe for me, bro. Like, I'm talking like, I'd cry every time I hear it. Like, I played it for That's... chat the other day, and they were like, dude, I'm getting flashbacks. You know, like, what what game is that for you? Um, So, Outer Wilds, it's less of a nostalgia mm -hmm. and more of like a triggered response. Okay. I don't know. But but if I hear <laughs> any of the Outer Wilds music, it's instantly like my heart. Yeah. Um, but okay. but again, that's for like different reasons. If I hear mm -hmm. anything from um, Ocarina of Time, which has one of the best soundtracks ever, 
and, really? and actually both both of those games have music is like a and a integral part of the game in a mm. way um in both uh but um yeah i mean golden eye obviously has like an incredible soundtrack uh mm. and <sighs> yeah i don't know i want to say the lobby music for cod 4 probably oh that's a call good of Duty one too 4, call yeah, of Duty yeah. 4 to modern warfare 2 either of those were probably the games that yep. i have like the most hours in combined like i just played them all day every day mm -hmm. see oh. uh, unlike unlike you you seem like a very uh story driven guy or well games like outer wilds and stuff single player i was a multiplayer gamer so the best game of all time for me and this is a zoomer answer is modern warfare 2 like 2009 modern warfare 2 the nostalgia that I get from having a snow day with the boys and hopping on there and just wrecking lobbies, getting nukes. Oh my god! I oh yeah. I do crimes to get back to that day. Like I would, I would go to prison for a significant amount of time to go back to the day that I played Modern Warfare Two for the first time. Uh, like, dude, I love, I love those games. I used to, I, I, I really didn't like the team games either. I would only really? play in 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 COD Four. I basically only played Cage Match. Okay. And free for all. Um and mm -hmm. then Modern Warfare 2 getting into like Black Ops, um um World War 2, World at War. My, I always had a goal. I play free for all. Um and I'm I would be such a sound whore. I was like one of the first people to get Turtle Beaches back in the day. <laughs> yeah. Um back when people weren't, you know, they weren't level 44 so they didn't have dead silence. <laughs> yeah. Um and I so I'm running around literally making zero footstep noises mm -hmm. right where where uh where they're like clearly you can hear exactly where they are so mm. my goal was always to get to 30 kills which is usually like the the the, the score limit right yeah try to get to 30 before second place got to 10. so that was your challenge was that like was always my challenge and i have some of my og videos which actually you you can only see if you come into my stream and ask to see them yeah. because they're like <laughs> on like an old facebook that i had that like because uh -huh. I, I edited these montages and I just put them up on my Facebook like for my friends and mm -hmm. they have like four views on them because none of you know most of my friends didn't play those games yeah. um but uh but yeah I've got montages upon montages of me playing getting accused of every lobby I had like a reputation where they're like oh this guy this guy uh <laughs> is such a cheater this guy's such yeah. a cheater you know whatever uh yeah that was oh that's my god at, dude. dude modern warfare 2 was such a blast i'm i'm glad to, so you said you're a solo gamer uh did you get into zombies at all zombies back in the day when i was we're at war zombies literally made me shit myself as a kid like i never really enjoyed zombies you much never, personally yeah nah. i so i think a lot of what makes me enjoy zombies as much as nostalgia playing with your friends snow day you know, getting on, hopping on origins. You're not a or, true gamer if you got friends, bud. What do yeah, you mean, I, friends? You know, I I've slowly come to realize that as of recent. You know, that's for sure. You know, becoming a streamer and everything. You know, it's just it sucks. You just lose people that you were close with. So, um, I guess that's part of the craft, huh? Well, that's uh, less about becoming a streamer and more getting older. <laughs> You know, I yeah. mean, what are you like 16, 17 now? <laughs> like, 20, you know, 22, but close enough. I feel like it's yeah, just wait, just wait till you're 30 <laughs> and all your friends all have like two kids <laughs> and whatever. And then it's like, try, try getting together the boys yeah. to play games when, yeah. you know, like, oh, the kids got karate and then I got to take <laughs> little Jennifer to cheerleading practice and. <laughs> Yeah, dude, I can't Good imagine, luck. man. That's why I try and take a, uh, take all the time that I have with my friends now and uh, use it to the best of my ability and uh, hang out with them. Um, I do gotta do gotta say one thing that many people know. Um, it's how I found you, how we found each other. We we met through the Tarkov community. Um, I actually yeah, saw. Yeah, you killed me. Yeah, I did. That's you how bastard. you met me. I met you a while ago. Like like I said, you're one of the first streamers that I I saw. Um, I saw the video in like your streams and stuff when you're working on Battle Buddy uh, many years ago um, with Tarkov and everything, and you've been a big part of the Tarkov community. I gotta ask, what do you think of Tarkov right now? Yeah, it's gonna hurt. It, listen, it hurts my soul explaining Tarkov right now, so. Uh, here's what I want to say. Okay. What I want to say is, is that... <laughs> 
what everybody is saying about Tarkov right now mm -hmm. was true two years ago. Yep. It's just y'all were in uh, your honeymoon phase yep. still. Yep. And once you are in it for long enough mm -hmm. and then it kind of like the edge gets taken off a little bit and yep. it's been long enough where you start to see all the people, all these, everybody thinks that what's going on with Tarkov now is new. And I just have to say, your boy's been saying all of this stuff <laughs> forever now. Yeah. And, and part of part of some of the like challenges I've had with Tarkov and what's driven me crazy and like, you know, with some yep. of the community and stuff is the kind of like gaslighting that went yep. on for so long about <laughs> yeah. like, bro, it's just a skill issue. And then you have the best players in the world right now saying yeah. how bad the game is. They yeah. said nothing's new, yeah, dog. We, it's we've been, known it's been really bad for a while. <laughs> yeah, we've known this. I remember watching old streamers and stuff, Deadly Slob getting shot behind a wall. It's like people nowadays like, oh, desync is terrible. Hackers are terrible. I remember when I used to see a dude in the sky flying around woods. I thought it was a damn bird, and he shoots me with an RSAS. You know, like this, this has been a problem. It just sucks that it hasn't been fixed. It really does. Like Tarkov, it's just... I don't understand. Um, it, this kind of leads me to my next question. Speaking about Tarkov, if there's any hot take right now, and you're on the hot seat, Veritas, uh, what do you think should happen with the game itself? Anything. Battlesate sells it to another company. It, something crazy like that. Is there, is there any hot take that you have for Tarkov? Could be something simple. Get rid of cheaters, you know? Or, or it, All right, if you're going to force me to have a hot take, mm -hmm. all, all of my takes used to be hot and they and the, the number like i said <laughs> yeah. the number of hot takes is coming down and down yeah. to now where everybody agrees with me and um i remember when everybody used to hate on your takes back in the day everybody in chat was complaining and like oh no veritas it's not true it's like no he was right the whole time so yeah steam audio was so bad yeah <laughs> Um, and I got to take three months to make a three hour video explaining mm -hmm. why everybody was wrong. And then now everybody's like, but oh, I miss steam audio. Oh, okay, cool. Right. It's nice <laughs> that you say that now. Um, if I have to, if I have to say anything that I think is a hot take, yeah, it would be that I think the game, I, I'm not advocating for this really, yeah. but like if it were up to me and ignoring everybody else, I think the game would be better with some kind of teammate indicator. Okay. Um, because uh, yeah. Uh, it, honestly, for me, the a super subtle, little tiny dot, like Battlefield, that, like a little like Battlefield. The, you don't like need dot. names. You don't need a mini map. You know, yeah. just like a tiny little dot above. Because, and and people will say that you know that's not realistic. And yeah. what I've always tried to argue is what isn't realistic is looking directly into the eyes of your teammate mm -hmm. and not knowing if it's your teammate. Yeah, you theoretically you should have trained with them for months you know what they look like tarkov has five different faces okay everybody's wearing the same shit the lighting is terrible the netcode's bad the audio is bad <laughs> yeah. so you not being able to recognize your friend when you have a nanosecond to react yeah. to something yeah i I, nah. I think that that's i think that that's a, a shortcoming in the yeah. design of the game all things being perfect um it would be a little bit more reasonable yeah. but with all of the challenges that you have with the game the whole the answer that i often get is like nah dude it forces you to have good communication and i ag agree somewhat mm -hmm. but there's no amount of communication where that would account for some of the crazy chaos that happens in the game that I don't think is the good kind of crazy chaos. Yeah. No, I get it. It's the bad. It's the bad kind, right? You shouldn't mm -hmm. imagine soldiers in Afghanistan going, "Hey, bro, wiggle." <laughs> yeah, no, I get what you're saying. You look at someone, you go, "Oh, that's Joe. Cool, not an enemy, right?" <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's Joe. No, I get what you're saying. I um, I see. Back to kind of the original or like the beginning of that point, right? Like realism. I feel like people are taking it too far nowadays. Can I be honest with you? Like. People are so. I made a, a tweet the other day. I don't know if you saw it. You could have seen it. I think that Di so. I want to. I want to have an idea that will cater towards both sides, right? Because Battle State and Tarkov has unfortunately 
got it gotten to the point where we have sides we have the rats and we have the chats you know the w key players the rats and i think it's the tarkov democrats and the tarkov yeah, republicans no, exactly <laughs> and it's one of those things where it's created such a, a a divide within the community which i don't know if you remember there used to like 2018 2019 there were like rats but it wasn't like significant like it is now it's like it's almost like an entire entire mindset Right, like the rats nowadays, weren't rats. They were Timmies. Yeah, exact hatchet runners is what we used to call like Timmies and shit. Bro, you know? can we talk about how? Remember, hatchet runners were that was the worst part of the game. Yes, yes, hatchet runners were the worst part, and now we got to worry about Bushmen. So I said on Twitter the other day, like I said, I said dynamic bushes. Now it's I gonna, saw that, dude. I saw that. <laughs> it's, it's a hot take, and I, 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 one peg came up with a good answer. He was like, dude. When you when you go to somewhere like bushes don't just disappear that they, like they're they're in the ground. I agree with that, okay? But I think that there should be something and here's my mindset with this. Dynamic bushes, some of a dynamic loot. It would allow you it would allow the rats to not necessarily get used to sitting in one bush, right? Because I'm I guarantee I can speak for a lot of rats. They think you know, going in the Tarkov raid, they know what spot they want to camp. They know where they want to go. They know you what think? bush I think so. I mean, if See, that, I was, that was a my, rat, that if, was my only that was yeah. my only thing with what you had said is mm -hmm. that I I think that it's where 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 they rat. Yeah. Um. And by they, I mean like literally everybody in some circumstances, mm -hmm. right? If it, w where they choose to hide, it's it's opportunistic and it's situational, yeah. right? If if I kill a guy. There, and, and it's homie, right? There's two dead bodies. One's on the first floor over here. One's on the second floor over here. I have to do surgery on two legs. I have to heal both of them. I got to mm -hmm. insurance fraud my shit in a place where no one's going to find it. So I got to run out to the bush or whatever. And then all of a sudden, I hear uh, footsteps stomping around the corner. <laughs> I'm going to run and I'm going to yeah. fucking sit in a corner in the room. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to wait because it's like the only, the only chance I have of winning against this three man that I hear mm -hmm. rolling up on me is by surprising them. Mm -hmm. If I if I sprint out and I go swing the corner, uh, like one of I might kill one, I might kill yeah. two, but unless they're potatoes, I'm I'm not gonna kill three. Yeah. Um. So I need to surprise them. Mm -hmm. I lose that if I make any noise. So now I'm yeah. like shit. I was healing. I gotta stop and I gotta wait. And then maybe they're sitting there like, did you hear that? And they stop and they don't hear anything. And they're like, oh okay. Must have been the fucking wind. And then all of a sudden, they run through. You're waiting. You're holding. Nobody runs by your door. You're like, oh, crap. They go upstairs. They uh -huh. see the dead body. They're looting around. And then they run back downstairs. And then all of a sudden, boom. You you shoot the guy in the mm -hmm. back. You initiate the fight. That guy was like, he was there for 10 minutes camping like a pansy. Yep. When really, it's I just Chad yeah. killed another 100%. squad. And so, I, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't think that the that like i think anybody i get what you're saying strat. yeah unless they unless they want to like exit camp mm -hmm. in like a very specific place yeah. which i i think that uh you know one or two content creators making that like strat mm -hmm. seem they they popularized it yeah. in a way but also made probably made it seem like that was the explanation for so many other situations yeah. like i just said so it's really hard to know. I don't know. I, I don't. Yeah. No, I, I get what I thought, you're saying. I thought your idea about dynamic bushes, whether it's a good idea or not, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. But I have to applaud you for thinking outside of the box and thinking mm -hmm. about different solutions um, because everybody in Tarkov land for the last eight years has been saying the same four things over and over and over again, yep. and they act like they're all novel. Nobody yeah. said anything fucking new in, in the better part of a decade. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time I heard that idea. So respect <laughs> yeah. for that. Whether or not whether or not it's good, whether or not it solves the problem, yeah. you know, whatever. But uh yeah. No, it's it's definitely there's a divide, and I have a few ideas cooking up my sleeve. I just wish I'll be honest, I have never in I've been in the Tarkov community for four years now. I'll be honest with you, Veritas. I'm not taking it serious because of my age. People don't like people in Tarkov. You you know how Tarkov players are. They're 25, 35, 40. You know, they're not necessarily kids that are going to cater towards any idea. You know, it's grown-ups that 
need to formulate their opinion. And a lot of people don't formulate their opinion around what I say because I'm young. I don't have experience. It's like, dude, I've been playing this game longer than you, you know, and, and people don't take me serious. So I hearing that from you really, like, I really appreciate it. I have a few ideas that I just never say, right? I learned well, very you're early. you're too nice. You're too yeah. nice. Oh, He's, yeah. Yeah, well, that that too. You're, you're, you're the nicest person in the Tarkov community I've ever met. <laughs> No, I, am too nice. I am too genuinely. nice. I am too nice, dude. Like I just, I want to give you a, a hug because, like, <laughs> I, I've, I've, ever since the day that I died to you <laughs> in on shoreline, yeah, and like I went in and like was like, "Yo, GG, dude," and you were like, "Oh, hey, man," you know, I've been and 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 ever since that moment, I was like, "This is the nicest motherfucker." Yeah, I've no, ever I met. felt so bad, dude. I felt so bad. Well, going back to our conversation. That, I mean, that kind of shows you. I was in that bathroom for five minutes because I heard shots over by uh, the the village, right? Yeah. In Shoreline, and I killed you because I was kind of, like, playing a little more tactically. So, like, I get what you're saying. It, the, the community is very uh, divided. I'm also too nice. So, I had an idea about a year, or not a year ago, three years ago. And it was, it, now thinking about it, it was a stupid idea. So, I understand the hate that I got on it. But I said that there should be... Even if you had a good idea, they'd still hate, so don't yeah. worry. Yeah, no, 100%. <laughs> it, was, it wasn't necessarily the best idea. I said that uh, the billboards in Tarkov should represent, like, uh, com not community members of the week, but they should display somebody, like, sh like they should be interchanged. You know how Apex has those banners during the during the game where they change? I'm not saying like that. I'm not saying that the Tarkov should have electro electrolyzed billboards, but have, like... Billboards that change to give a sense of, I don't know. It, it's it's hard to explain. Now I had a really good idea, and I was saying, you know, with Tarkov I like, I like, being, dude, I like that man. Being, with Tarkov being run down, I I made a made one for clean, and it was like a very rustic uh, feeling of like, um, like the billboard itself was run down. It had cracks in it. Like I I just wanted to have it, the billboards in Tarkov to change, so it it gave everybody a sense of. I don't know. It, like you, you know how the game is nowadays. It's very stale, and I wanted to create a change of change of environment. You know, yeah, and I mean, kind of like an environmental streamer item kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, I mean, exactly. It, it, would be, it would be a no brainer to to have advertisements for the. Yeah. Now, granted, this is redundant because we already have the streamer mm -hmm. items, but like it would at least be in canon and not immersion breaking yeah. to see a, you know, a deadly slob beard oil ad. Mm -hmm. And have a picture of him exactly. or whatever. Like, I don't know, but uh, yeah, one hundred percent. But yeah, I'm with you, man. I like that. Yeah, it was a, it was an idea that I had a while ago, but uh, uh, I got a lot of hate on it, and it kind of made me stop saying shit for a little bit. But I need, I, I mean, I'm past it now. But I just now remembered it, thinking about ideas and stuff. Um, I wanted to talk. Aside from Tarkov, though, what are some of the future games you're looking forward to? A anything you excited about? Any games coming out here soon? Or ga mm. is gaming stale like like it is for me? <laughs> mm, the most excited I was for recently was uh, the Warhammer DLC for Power Washing Simulator, and I hate <laughs> Warhammer. Okay, so that tells you how wait, how I'm feeling about. Wait, they had a DLC. <laughs> they have DLC. But, oh, they, dude, they've got Back to the Future. They've got SpongeBob. Bro, they've got Laura Croft. For fucking Power Tomb Raider. Washing Simulator. Yeah, dog. Bro, that's the sh you know what, man. I'm. Chat, I'm not streaming Tarkov Monday. How much is it? How much is it, Verita? How much? It's like seven bucks for okay, the DLC. Great. Do, you, do you have Any... Power Washing Sim? Do you have the no, game? No, I don't have it. Each of them is like seven or eight bucks, but you know, it's okay. a solid. It's a solid few hours yeah. of. Uh, it's a write off I mean, too. Dude, eight dollars is eight dollars is is a medium Coke at the, the movie theater. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Uh, it's a McDouble so I, I nowadays. Bought like, I bought like six or seven. Okay. Of the of the DLCs, yeah. Okay. I'm all about it. Okay, so Power Washing Simulator, not necessarily. I'll tell you what. I'm excited for, um, oh, what's that one game that's coming out? It's a new MMO. Are you a big MMO guy? Never really got an MMO. I played, I've, I got to level two in World of Warcraft so that okay. I could get a, a a card back unlocked in Hearthstone. Oh, okay. I, I don't know why, <laughs> Veritas, but you, uh, you take me for somebody that if you were to play an MMO, you would be the best player in the game. Like, you would do the studies to fucking... Like, bro, you are so smart, Veritas. Bro, you code. I can't draw a fucking smiley face. Without, no, but you, like, you, nah, you, but you, but you could too. It's not about being smart. Oh, it's about okay knowing a very specific 
yeah, yeah. I mean, dog, you you could be if you wanted to. Yeah, you could be a a really great engineer. Mm. It it's just it's it's about a way of thinking mm -hmm. less than it is about memorization, you know, or or trivial knowledge yeah. or whatever. Um, yeah, okay. it really is more of a more of a a way of thinking. But yeah, man. Uh, I think I I would never be I wouldn't necessarily like I I was never remotely the best at Tarkov, mm -hmm. but I would say about some specific subsets of information, you know, I was I was amongst the the most knowledgeable. Yeah. Um. One hundred percent. I'm I'm too I'm too old and lazy to to ever be like the best <laughs> at anything. Oh. Uh, you're, you're, gaming related. Yeah, I get what you're saying, but I, I don't think that's true, Mr. Veritas. You are more than good at Tarkov. I mean, I I, I grew up watching you, Veritas, so don't be saying that, that about I yourself. Before became washed, man. Of <laughs> yes, <laughs> the fucking watch. Um, I, I took a, a trip to uh, Fort Worth recently. Um, It was a... Uh, it was a trip over, over there for Loot Fest. I don't know if you saw on Twitter about Loot Fest or anything. Um, I got to play VR, competitive VR, and it was like a 5v5 game mode, a big room where you had the VR, and you literally walked around in this big room, and there were, like, walls and, and like, things where you could, like, jiggle peek IRL and stuff. It, it was probably the I'm most out of fun. thinking about it, Dude, dog. Dude, you don't think that you're at how out of breath you are until you take off the headset. My glasses were fogged up. They had sweat dripping down my glass. It was so bad. I, dude, it, I truly think that's the future of gaming. I never thought I would say that, but VR seems like it would be. I wanted to ask, as someone as smart as yourself, what do you think the future of gaming is? Do you have any have any ideas of what it might be? Um, I mean, I think something similar to VR, augmented reality, mm. um, haptics. I think is going to be huge. Okay, like. I, I would love it's one of those things that like practically speaking like it gives you a disadvantage mm -hmm. um but I would love it if like like the mouse was like powered um okay. to where like bah, 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 like you had recoil like there were wheels mm -hmm. similar to like a, a force feedback steering wheel in like a mm -hmm. racing sim um dude I would love that I would love that. Like stuff like yes. that that Yeah. Because, you know, think about how skill-based recoil is, right? Mm -hmm. In in real life, when you're shooting a gun, you have the instant physical feedback plus the visual feedback that you get about like where mm -hmm. the muzzle goes. Yeah. And that allows you to boom, okay, I know I need to pull down to control, you know, like whatever, right? Yeah. In a game, you shoot, especially in a game like Tarkov, pre-recoil update, uh, which, thank God for that. Um, <laughs> you would shoot, and it would go up left, and you're like, okay, now it's too late, but I got to pull down right. Yeah. Bang. Down right, the recoil. Oh, I got to pull yeah. up left. You're, you're, you're reacting really late mm -hmm. based on purely visual. Or you have games where there's just a pattern, and you memorize the pattern, mm -hmm. and that's you know, like CSGO, which yep. can get kind of... You know, I mean, it's cool. I, I like CS and everything, but not every game necessarily needs to have like a pattern you need to yeah. memorize. But to me, like the ideal would be it really does have some kind of randomized recoil within okay. a reasonable pattern. But if you could feel it with your hand, it goes back left. Then you're pushing up right to account for Dude, it. Dude, yeah, that's that such would, a good idea. Uh, you know, like, that I, we, we, did we not have that already? But here's the thing. Nobody would want it. They'd all use the fucking mice that didn't do it because... Yeah, well, yeah. Well, actually, you know what? Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe if it was randomized recoil... Yeah. Actually, I, I, I'm walking back what I said. Maybe with randomized recoil, it would be more competitive if you could feel the feedback because... Yeah. Yeah, no, okay, I get that, was a, that was a better idea than I even thought originally. <laughs> yeah, no, no. You just... Need some, don't copy this. It's patented, chat. TM, don't, TM, yeah. TM, 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 TM. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. I no, that's a good idea. Also, just out of curiosity, what mouse are you running right now? So I'm using uh, a Is that glorious. The, oh, the, the glorious, glorious model. Okay. Oh, now, so I, I here's the deal. I yeah. really like the Logitech, like G Pro, G -Pro Wireless. Yep, I have a 703, the G Pro, mm -hmm. the G Pro Wireless. I love it. Um, it was th that was that's the mouse that 
if I could pick any mouse I'd have right now. Yeah. The problem is, is that my lo my G Pro wireless is in about 75 pieces in the corner behind a, a <laughs> table there. Uh, I, somehow it ended up in pieces in the corner. I don't know how. It was really oh, okay. weird. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, for sure. And, and this, the Glorious was like in a box yeah. because someone from Glorious reached out and was like, hey, we'd send you. And so yeah. I'm like, yeah, sure. I The Glorious feels perfectly fine perfectly comfortable honestly no different than the g pro yeah the only difference is that it the battery lasts it oh. feels like 30 percent as long as the g pro yeah. so i'm every day i have to plug it in mm -hmm. whereas the g pro i could go like a week without having to, to charge yeah. it um so that's the only thing but uh, but it feels good feels yeah. really nice really light light the only whatever, reason i'm asking is because i have my so i recently partnered up with HyperX, and yeah. i i use the g pro i was the g pro connoisseur i would have never switched off they sent me one and i was like dude i'm gonna fucking try this like i you know how how sponsorships are you know i was like dude i'm not expecting my this shit's so good like yeah. i dude i love it. It, it this isn't an ad or anything but i fucking love it it's so good so so good so That's what's why good asked. about it okay so it's super lightweight okay so i don't know if you're a fan of lightweight smout i know the glorious so they're they're considered lightweight what I love about this is that it's very similar to what you said. This has 105 hours of battery time. Mm -hmm. And you could go, you could go essentially, if you turn it off and stuff, which I don't, or well, if you go 105 hours straight, it's clearly going to run out of battery. But what I love the most about this mouse, okay, and, and like I said, kind of sponsored, kind of not, you know, podcast isn't sponsored, but the, the charging. You know how the G Pro charging is? It's like this big kind of like dongle. Like, uh, I'm, I'm sure you have it. It's like a, it's like a, it has wings on it and shit. Yeah, yeah. This is like a straight dongle. This yep. one is like. And the, the, the Glorious also has this, which is significantly smaller. Yeah. So look at, do you see it? I don't know if you can yeah, see that. Yeah. It's literally that like your phone USB? charger. Yeah. It's USB-C. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's for what the new iPhones use. So I literally just plug it in and it's not clunky. And the wire itself is super like glidey, so when I am charging it, I can play. I just I love it. I love it's really really good. Um, and it's super lightweight. And I mean, you can't beat three year warranty as well if something goes wrong with it. So I mean, you know, what it happens if it just let's just say theoretically yeah. spontaneously explodes? Yeah, against in your a corner. Drywall. Yeah, in yeah. A, um. I don't know if Hyperx would fix that. I'm sure they might. They might okay. help me out. Um, if you need, you know, maybe I can get some help, man. <laughs> yeah, we don't have to talk about that. <laughs> That's funny, Veritas. This next uh, thing, I'm gonna, it's gonna end the gaming subject. I will say, we are, um, we, we, we're about an hour in the podcast. If you're on the, uh, Google Doc, which I think you are, actually, no, you're not, no, you're not, it's okay. I was going to I say that I am going to, uh, probably skip some of the questions just because... We're taking a uh, uh, we're taking some time with some of these questions, which is completely okay. I've got okay. all day, by the way. Oh, you do. So, however long you want to go, okay. I'm totally fine. I, I just want to. I usually do that timer like out of respect for the the guest. So I, I know got, uh, I got nothing oh, to do. Okay. All right. Great. Um, with that being said, I'm gonna stream something, Mr. Veritas. I made this just for you, by the way. Uh -oh. Um, let me see here. Let me pull this up and paint. I'm gonna pull this up here and then open. And then bingo. And then I'm going to stream it to you on Discord. Oh, shit. That's the wrong one. What the hell? Hold on. Um, paint. Uh, open. Uh, here we go. I made this just for you, like I said. Um, we are going to... We are going to open this. Let me stream it here to you. And then I'm going to switch this to my display. Oh, hell um, yeah. Hopefully this works. Um, let me see here. We are... Uh, I'm going to have to unstream my camera just because it messes with this. And then there we go. Yeah. We're good to go. I made this for you. Um, very similar to the announcement thing. I, I made a guitar here, your little logo, a little Tarkov in the back. Um, I want to go over your top five games of all time, Mr. Veritas. And this is uh, going to be controversial. Uh, this will be put on Twitter. So, um, yeah, <laughs> make sure that you... Uh, you know what you're talking about here uh, and give your best opinion. If you want to start at number five, you can. If you want to start at number one, you can. I'm going to do this on paint. So oh. it's going to be uh, very, very difficult. But we got it. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm panicking now. Okay. I, I recently made a list. Oh. Uh, 
I literally made a list, yeah. and now I, I wanna. I, I I always forget. I always forget something mm -hmm. uh, that I that I'm mad about forgetting. <laughs> but uh, maybe we'll just maybe we'll just wing it. Okay. Uh, number five. Number five. Okay, we'll start at five. I didn't give myself a lot of room here, but we'll, we'll make it work. Uh there's too many good options. <laughs> That's why I do these. <laughs> because Twitter has a heyday with it, Veritas. <laughs> okay. Um, I I really can't decide between Grand Theft Auto 3 or Gran Turismo okay. 3. Well, I'll say, I'll say Grand Theft Auto okay. 3. DCA 3. Okay. Sorry yeah. about the writing. Okay, GTA 3. Grant, I've never... There was a GTA 3? Am I showing my age here? Wasn't that there... was the first... That was the first 3D GTA. The oh. GTA 1 and 2 were, like, top-down. Really? Top I didn't down. know that. Yeah, like, man. oh, my God. Like, Zomboid, in a sense? Like, that sort of top-down? Um, Have you ever played Zomboid? I'm, I'm trying to picture it. I, I guess kind of like Zomboid. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm a picturing, like, Zomboid, but... Yeah, I'll I'll uh I'll, I'll literally send you a little screenshot of uh okay of like what it that was that was GTA two I believe. Um, pull this up. Oh yeah, so kind of like Zomboid. Zomboid's like a three D. Okay, that makes sense. Like, no, I yeah, see that yeah. now. Okay, but so GTA three yeah. was the first like three D open world three D game. I stayed home from school sick so that I could sneak over to my neighbor's house. <laughs> Uh, and play because I didn't have a PlayStation at the time yeah. uh, so that I could play the game because when they got home from school, they weren't going to let me play. They were going to play. So <laughs> I had I brought. Yeah, I had my own memory card GTA and everything. GTA 3, OK. So yeah, I yeah. thought it just went GTA Vice City and then GTA 4 and then GTA 5. Are you excited Jesus for GTA Christ. 6? Uh, no, <laughs> I'm 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 not excited, but. That's almost like I'm. I would rather be pleasantly surprised than disappointed. Yeah. So I have okay. no expectations. Okay. No, that's fair. Um. Okay. Oh yeah. Someone mentioned San Andreas. San Andreas has San Andreas has one of the best soundtracks. Really? Okay. Uh, oh my god. Yeah, dude. So we got we got number five GTA three. Um. All right. I'm gonna say Call of Duty four. Okay. For number four. Oh my god, dude. My writing is horrific okay cob four no i mean explain your choice here veritas what what <sighs> cob four over modern warfare 2 or is modern warfare um, 2 gonna be three <laughs> nah i can't have okay. more than one call of duty okay uh, i respect that just like i can't have more than one gta yeah uh, um yeah i, I caught four mm -hmm. just because Honestly, probably because it became, it was like, it came first. Yeah. You know, like if Modern Warfare 2 um, came first, then I'd probably say that both of those are like okay. incredibly formative, uh, you yeah. know, in, in my, in 100%. my FPS gaming years. But yeah, COD 4 is just, I spent so many hours playing that game. Okay. I used to, I used to gamble. There was, a, there used to be a website where you what? could bet on your games. And I, that was, I had to buy Dude. a capture card because you would self-report the results. Yeah. So you could put up $10 and you would you'd PayPal the money into an escrow account. Yeah. And then you'd report the result of the game and then the money would go to totally oh, like, it, yeah, that it, it sounds was deemed like, like illegal. That's, yeah. That's, it, it was, <laughs> but, and, but people would get butthurt and say, no, I won. And then it would yeah. go into arbitration. And I, so I had to buy a capture card so that I could okay. record my gameplay. Yeah. But uh, okay. so good, dude. So good. Um, <sighs> number three. Uh, I'll say Diablo 2. Okay. I, I have room to write here. Diablo um, 2. Are you a fan of the new one? Because I know... Uh, I'm, more, I'm more of a fan than... I think most of the hate the game got was mm -hmm. from people who, like, just don't understand the genre. Yeah, um, I agree. Like, like people say... Like, like, one of their complaints was that Diablo 4 was too grindy. <laughs> And yet you could, I got like, I don't know how many level 100 characters within like a couple of weeks. Whereas it would take me like hundreds of hours to get from 92 to 93 Yeah. in Diablo 2. 
Yeah. So like it never made sense. So many of the criticisms just seemed like the people came out of nowhere, never played an a yeah. a r um, an ARPG game, mm -hmm. and but that's not to say it, it didn't have problems. Yeah. It definitely had its problems, but I think overall it was it was it was a it was an Man, okay game. I'm I got bored with it. I'm surprised but. with you being a Diablo fan, you haven't you haven't ventured as as far in the world of Warcraft because Blizzard is known for them damn grindy games. WoW is just the problem. The problem with with WoW yeah. is that it has so long of a history, and there's been yeah. nine billion expansions. <laughs> so I'm just too late to the party. Yeah, I get what you're saying. No, I get I get that. It's like getting into Lord of the Rings now. Yep. It's like uh, it's I missed the boat. It's too late. Yep. You know what I mean? No, I I that no one hundred percent. It's definitely a problem for me because I like the nostalgia with video games. You know, I like being able to experience the world as the at the same time as everybody else. And I feel like WoW has kind of unfortunately not done that. Right? There is seasons of discovery, but yeah. yeah. So Diablo three or Diablo two, sorry, is that at number three? Um, you have COD 4 at 4, GTA 3 at 5, okay? And I would like to point out before, you know, Twitter Twitter goes off on a tangent, this is Veritas's list of best games of all time. This doesn't have to be, the, in your opinion, the best games of all time in a sense of, like, crafted. Nostalgia plays a big role here. Diablo 2, right? Grindy as hell. You know, some people like that, some people don't. So, uh, before we cancel anybody, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Number two, Veritas. What are you what are you gonna put? I mean, I think I kind of spoiled this earlier, but okay. I gotta say, Ocarina of Time. Okay, I don't know how to spell that. I'm gonna do A O A C. O no, 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 O O C. O O C. Ocarina like, with an O. Oh, o, like, yeah, O O O O T. Okay, like that. Oh my God, dude, what am I? Except fucking? without, except without the A. Oh. Yeah, oh, Ocarina oh, oh, of I, Time. There oh, okay. You go. Okay, yeah, that's it's showing my age. Show Most my people age say sure. Oak Arena, or some people yeah. say Oak Arena. I, I okay. I, I don't know. I, maybe that's the right way of pronouncing it, but I refuse. Okay, I think we, I think we figured the, this one out earlier, but yeah, I mean, I, there's a lot of nostalgia there for you, right? I, I mean, yeah, uh, d dude. Just the the story is is really awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, I love time travel and yeah. everything, and okay. like. There's a time travel element. You play half the game as like a kid and then half the game as an adult. Yeah. There's some really cool mechanics around like you come to later parts of the game yeah. that you realize like you can't you can't finish parts of the game as an mm -hmm. adult. So what you have to go back as a kid, do it again or and vice versa. Yeah. There are certain tools you use as a kid, like, a, you know, the, the slingshot or the boomerang as a kid that as an adult you can't use. So there's just really cool puzzle solving. Mm -hmm. It's it's a cool story. Um, okay. It, it's just such a good game. It's such a good game. The, is there any plans of a remaster for that game? Since it's being, it, is it, it's older, right? So. Yeah, I mean, I 90, either 96 or 98, My I think is when God. it came out. 96 I was, was negative four years old, Veritas. That's how, that, that makes, <laughs> makes you feel old, don't it? <laughs> yeah, I was <laughs> eight or 10 or something, so. Dude, up. no. <laughs> I always tell people, and this might mind boggle you. It's uh, not necessarily the best comparison, but I was born after 9/11. That's how young I am. I know a lot of people. 9/11 uh, is a a, uh, a very significant day for. Yeah, wait. Just yeah. wait until the kid. Wait until you have people saying, "What is uh, what's what's COVID? I've never heard of that before." Yeah. And you're like, "Well, when I was uh, back, yeah, in, back my day, in my day, I had to wear a mask to the grocery." It's like hearing about like know? the Spanish flu. You're like, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I don't do. know anybody who lived through that. You know, like, <laughs> no, I get what you're saying. That's funny. Okay, so for the audio viewers, we have uh, five GTA three, uh, four we have Cobb four. Uh, three, we have Diablo two. Uh, two, we have Ocarina. Uh, I'm not even gonna try it. You know, it, 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 old game. Woo! Yeah. Um, <laughs> number one, Bear Thoughts. Who you got? Gotta say, Outer Wilds. Okay, Outer Wilds. Okay. Hopefully, I'm spelling this right. Yeah, there's and there's a game called The Outer Worlds. And they came out oh, the same yeah. time, and they're both space games. It's not the Outer Worlds; it's Outer Wilds. So don't buy the wrong game. Okay. Okay. Um, so Outer Wilds, and you said that this was the most, like the, 
you said it triggered you in a sense to like it, it, like change my it, it just it's one of those things that gives you perspective on yeah on the on life the scale of life really? the scale of you it's that where... good dude i'm gonna download this shit bro i need yeah. to D do you like anything having to do with space at all i do love space games but most space games are shit it's star what, citizen see, this isn't buggy uh star star uh with starfield bethesda you know what i'm saying like yeah, yeah no it's 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 so weird and that like i don't even want to call it a space game except yeah. the whole thing takes place like it's like a mini solar system you ever seen um the, like there's that is a super mario galaxy you ever seen that game i, I never actually so. played yeah, it yeah yeah i think i know what you're talking about yeah it's like there's like a small solar system where you can go to all these different planets but like it only takes a minute to get there yeah everything's like like really small scale but it's all like real physics and in not an annoying Dude. way it's 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 so much fun. Okay. And like your spaceship is made out of like wood. Dude, it's, it's, <laughs> it's honestly, I don't even want to say anything more. Yeah, about no, it, I get I what you're saying. I get what you, we, we can, we can end this subject. We can move on. I appreciate you giving me uh, the top five games for any of the audio viewers watching on Spotify or uh, listening, whatever it may be. Number five, we have GTA 3. Ver, uh, Veritas decided he was going to put uh, COD 4 at 4, which is a good pick. Three is Diablo 2. Uh, two is, uh, yep, yep, that game, the, uh, Acorona Rhina of time. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm butchering that every single time. Number one, we have Outer Wilds, which I'm going to download after this stream, I would like to point out. Um, and there are two, there are two honorable mentions. Okay, we can do, we, the wit yeah. The, the Witness. Okay. Is that a horror game? Nope. Oh, okay. It's a puzzle game. Witness, okay, honorable mention, Witness, okay. And then um, we'll do one more. And and day of the tentacle what the fuck A day of <sighs> yeah. the tentacle okay day of the is there anybody in chat that has played day of the tentacle dude it's <laughs> it's so i ain't never heard so of day good. it's it's old school point yeah. and click oh okay you know like like you have your little guy's walking along the screen in like a pseudo 3D environment. You like click on a thing and he'll go over and like whoop, pick up a a thing that was on a table oh. and now it's in your inventory and you could like click on the thing. Like let's okay. say it was a a coin. You yeah. take coin, use, and then you click on like a washing machine and it would like a coin operated and it would like use it. It's a puzzle game that involves traveling through time. It takes place in a house, okay, a mansion and you have to go back in time yesterday to save the world. Yeah. And you, all three of you go in, in uh, three different time machines. And all three of you are supposed to go back. One of you goes back 300 years in the past. <laughs> one of you goes forward 300 years in the future. And then one of you stays in the current day. Okay, yeah. that. Okay. And you solve problems like in the past. Uh, the person that goes up into the future... She's literally hanging by like her underwear in a tree and she's stuck there. You can't control her as a character yeah. until you convince George Washington to cut down the cherry tree 300 years ago. And that's like a puzzle. Bro. Yeah. You, you got to find the paint, send it back in time. Yeah. You paint like the kumquat tree that red <laughs> so that he's like, oh, look, there's a cherry tree. And then he chops it down. And then all of a sudden in the future, the tree disappears. So that now you can control. It's just it's it's unbelievably good okay that's all i'll say i'm gonna trust you on that one i'm gonna trust you on that i don't know if i'll download that but it does sound they like remastered a it oh. they actually remastered okay, it a few years yeah. back it's pretty good yeah i still don't think i'm gonna download it but i appreciate the the recommendation okay so honorable mentions we have day of the witness and then uh, uh another honorable mention we have day of the tentacle correct is that how you yeah, say day of the tentacle okay. and the witness yeah oh my, oh my god i'll tell you what um i'm gonna actually unstream this we're gonna move on but i do want to say a little story as of recent i've watched a few movies that have fucked with my head as of recently let me stop streaming there let me go back here let me go back here there we go and then there we go we are good to go um I've been watching some movies as of recently, okay. and um, there have been a few that fuck with my head like that day of the tentacle game. Um, Interstellar, 
I watched that for the first time two days ago. My favorite movie of all time. So fucking good. I dude, I was like, you know Outer how Wilds is day of the uh, not day of the ten. It is like Interstellar, but times ten for me. Oh my god. Okay, so yeah, we gonna be downloading that, and then um, I don't know if you're a big fan of anime. I did watch my first ever anime last night. It was called Edge Runners. No, it was not. We went. On, we wanted to watch that, but it was a, a series. I wanted to start a TV show, but we did a movie instead. It's called Your Name. I don't know if you've heard of Your Name. Um, the only anime I watched, other than like Pokemon and Dragon Ball yeah. Z, um, which, by the way, I, I there was sad news overnight. I don't know if you heard. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, terrible, man. Um, um, which then the the timing of that makes the joke that I was going to say Corey in the house was the only other anime that I watched, but mm -hmm. it makes the timing of that. Yeah, no, I fucked that and, one up. And, and, that's and on you... me. Yeah, that's on me. <laughs> uh, that's and you're me. probably too young to even get the reference. But um, <laughs> do you know what Corey in the house is? No, God damn it. I don't. I don't Son actually. Of... <laughs> okay, forget. Well, then everybody else, uh, Corey in the house is my favorite anime. Um, but uh, you already have some question marks. <laughs> uh, but Edge Runners I is heard... one I I yeah. was convinced to watch, and that single handedly made me want to like potentially look at other animes because mm -hmm. that was a fantastic that's one of those ones that now when i hear one of the songs from it yeah i get a little little emotional okay uh yeah so i've been i've been hanging out with some friends recently patty is a patty is one of my friends he's been watching a lot of animes and he told me edge runners is very good now what they did tell me is that there's also a lot of sex in that movie mr verita or no well, it's, it's fucking tv shows and uh, you know, uh, gamers like myself, I'm not a, not a edge big runners. Runner. Yeah, apparently. Wait, wait, are we talking about the same edge runners, cyberpunk edge runners? Yeah, I don't remember. I mean, it, I there's not there was, like I heard there was a sex scene like five minutes into it, so I was like, nah, I'm not a fan of that. We we listen to, we watching something else, you know. I don't think there's a sex scene. I mean, there's like there's definitely uh, some romantic like going sexuality on. Yeah. you know it's like obviously like the okay. the main character is like okay. has a you know is interested in the pretty girl character or whatever but i don't remember any sex okay. I mean, maybe maybe yeah yeah we're gamers so we don't really remember much about sex anyway uh moving on the content creation um <laughs> i wanted to point out that i rated you the other day veritas and like i said earlier you were playing lawnmower simulator and uh, I'm going to be honest, I wasn't expecting much. I was expecting myself to leave after five minutes. I'm not even going to lie to you. I had a blast for the next 30 minutes before I had to go to the gym. You know, I wasn't typing in chat, but you were watching a Flat Earth documentary where they tried to uh, debunk Flat Earthers, and uh, it was hilarious seeing their excuses. Um, I'm just going to point out, and, th like, the <laughs> Lawn Mower Simulator is great. Like, that, Dude, that's a, a cool a chill game. It's a game, game, man. It's uh, like it's like power washing sim. It's just a game to vibe yeah. out. I couldn't like play it and put my full attention mm -hmm. on it. I need to be doing something else usually. Yeah. You know, it's it's like okay. Hearthstone or you know a lot of other games for like me, that, it's that wow. you can kind of For me it's wow. Yeah. I mindlessly grind the fuck out of wow and just do like dungeons and stuff to grind characters. Yeah. That's what I love. Yeah, and, and, and I've been watching the flat earth stuff because I'm working on basically a, a documentary kind of project yeah. myself. Um, not because I don't think the earth is flat, uh, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> I recently do. had, I recently had success with, uh, a, a documentary that I made about, uh, about one Billy Mitchell, mm -hmm. uh, that was a four hour, four hour documentary that just hit a million views. It's the first video I ever had that hit a million views Really? and it's not about Tarkov and it's four hours long, <laughs> <laughs> which True. was probably one of the most encouraging things. Yeah. Yeah, it you pushes know, so. you to push other content for sure. You know who I think does really good content, and I this is a hot take. I think um, Asmongold. I love Asmongold's content. He does React content. Very yeah. interesting guy, and he has some really. He's just he's down the earth, but he's incredibly real, and I think he's, that's why. Well, I think the kids say. They call that based, I believe. Yes. Well, actually, it's funny you mentioned that because um, literally one of the next questions is about that. Um, I wanted to start which, uh, with you starting content creation. You know, you've not only done so much in the Tarkov field, variety field. Um, I think what so many appreciate about you as a creator is how real you are. You have base takes, as the kids would say. How, how do you view yourself, though? How do you view yourself as a creator? Like you, you think of you're somebody like Asmin Gold, where you have those base takes, or are you just being like yourself and you know sharing your opinion. 
I mean, I think the moment you think you're based. Yeah, you're you're unbased. It's, it's like it's like yeah. the moment you say you're cool, you're no longer cool, right? Yeah, but no. So I, I just my my content follows my world view. Okay. My the, my yeah. outlook on life, um, which is I don't want to believe things that aren't true. Yeah. Um, I want to believe as many true things as I can, and mm -hmm. as few as few false things as possible. And I care about my fellow human, and I have empathy. Yeah, um, which is rare nowadays, for just so whatever reason. <laughs> put those two together, and I mean that's the that's the way I see myself, and a lot yeah. of my content, even with Tarkov, was around. Let me talk about Tarkov, but let me sneak in this kind of like rational skepticism, evidence based thinking, mm -hmm. in science engineering. You know, try and like sneak that into my content. I mean, I think that's why. That's what sets me apart, yeah. if I were to say, from 100%. from a lot of other folks. Uh, yeah, you're a very real, real dude, and I, I res a lot of people respect that, right? Like, there's people in chat right now, like Veritas, a normal dude in a space largely occupied by idiots, which is a great um, conversation starter because we are going to talk about that. Um, I do want to say I mentioned it earlier. You really like you you pushed me to start streaming Tarkov. Like I, I genuinely mean that. Um, your your streams are always a blast to sit in, no matter what you're doing. I have to ask though, who inspired you to start streaming? Or by was it yourself? Was it somebody else? Like who inspired you? Um, smoke. Okay, good answer. Smoke, smoke, smokes the goat. Yeah. Um, goat. Yeah, I I he's the he's the reason why uh I used to do. The first raid of every day playing Tarkov I, was an immersion raid. So it was like camera off. I wasn't talking, no microphone. Dude. And I'd be walking and slowly, free looking around, make it cinematic. Yeah. I would try to play. I would try to play immersive cinematically as opposed mm -hmm. to like meta running around doing whatever. Yeah. Um, That's a really sick that idea. Was, that was largely inspired. I mean, entirely inspired by Smoke because he never had a face cam yeah it was and he always was using voice lines um it was just so immersive voice lines and interacting with people in a way that was just outside of what people yeah. were doing um back in the day man yeah so i mean Smoke. how unique his streams were and how he played the game mm -hmm. was so different than just every other content creator which was mm. i'm gonna put my webcam in the corner and i'm gonna play a game <laughs> you know uh, yeah in whatever way i think people want to see me play the game 100 percent. um so yeah i really like that and i don't i don't like daisy really but yeah. i'll watch him play daisy any day yeah. of the week smoke is he, he tells stories man he makes smoke is a smoke is a very good dude too I, it, his streams are always a blast to sit in and it, it's like one of those things that it, he kind of um I, somebody for me kind of like that the smoke for you is deadly slob deadly slob for me is just have a cup of coffee and watch somebody play hardcore Tarkov, you know? And it, it makes me, nowadays when I watch him, it makes me miss enjoying Tarkov in a sense. Like, I still enjoy it, but he makes me realize how simple the game was by his play style. He doesn't necessarily rush everything, you know? He's not he, playing meta. He's yeah, playing the game how it's supposed to be played. <laughs> yeah, no, and, and it it makes me miss the enjoyment of Tarkov and what it, what it used to bring to me. Um, yeah, man. It, there, it's a completely different atmosphere, and even in the content creation space, with the, which is my next question, um, I know content creation has changed a lot over the years, like a, a lot. Um, from what I started and you started, uh, the entire field has switched. Um, how do you feel about the current content people are releasing, and what do you think the future is? So, I'm just going to point out, I'm not going to say names, but there is content nowadays that is completely belittling other people, and there is content nowadays that is completely, it's not real. It doesn't feel, it feels fake to me, if I'm being completely honest. A lot of it is a uh, generated personalities to where you get the most clicks and the most views. Um, you hate on somebody else and you um, you get views from it. Um, how do you feel about it, and uh, what do you think the con the future of content creation is? Um, I mean, I'm I'm with you. There's there there's kind of a formula that I think a lot of people mm. there, there's a few different formulas, I guess, yeah. that that people have kind of like latched onto um, and have become successful with, and a lot of those formulas, I are the kinds of formulas that I wouldn't 
want to succeed with. Yeah. Because I care less about success and less about money. Like Maslow's hierarchy of needs. I've, yeah. I have like everything. I, I have enough money. I don't care about, I genuinely don't care about money. Yeah. Um. I, I don't care about, you know, having everybody like love me. To me, it's about like, information mm -hmm. and, and and entertainment and whatever but I, I don't know dude i'm kind of all over the place there's so much great content out there mm -hmm. um what what triggers me the most is is that the content that succeeds is not the best content necessarily yep the majority of it is content aimed at at fulfilling the requirements of an algorithm yep more than anything, mm -hmm. which is why the lowest common denominator, lowest effort shit is successful. Yep. And because I care less about success mm -hmm. and more about a vision or a goal or whatever about what I want to communicate, that's why I'll spend three months on a video that'll make me 180 bucks or whatever. Um, and I'll be happier with that than if I just pooped out the same kind of formulaic yeah. shit that isn't unique doesn't say anything new doesn't teach anybody anything and doesn't make the world a better place for anybody yeah um that gets a bajillion views 100 percent. there's very few people who provide unique content yeah that isn't just the same cookie cutter low effort bullshit no, um, i and... i agree it's it's like what i tell chat all the time and i, I genuinely mean this it doesn't matter how many followers i have how many subs i could have ten thousand subs you know, 20,000 followers, whatever it may be. If I'm not a good person at the end of the day, I can't sleep at sleep with myself at night. I know that might sound crazy, but I'm like, you you mentioned earlier how I'm a, a nice person. I'm very empathetic and I'm almost too sympathetic and empathetic. Okay. And what I mean by that is like, if I did somebody wrong during the day, I cannot sleep at night because it keeps me up. Right. That, so I'm the same person. I got to, like, I got to reconcile that asap you know yeah, no exactly and that's why it's it's so important to have things like therapy and stuff to get that stuff out but it's like if i'm not a good person at the end of the day i'm not going to release the content you know and i i'm a firm believer in that and don't get me wrong i slip up sometimes and i you know there are some kid in tiktok <laughs> chat and i you know make jokes about his mom like that's not something i should be doing but it's just like in the moment that's what i feel is best and i regret that you know yeah and I feel like in a in a day and time, I do hope in a sense, and this might might sound condescending, but I do hope that some of these creators nowadays creating this content that are belittling other people, I do hope they have a wake up call eventually. I think they will. Um, now it's it's one of those things, right? It, it, you would rather cry in a Lambo than you'd rather cry in a Honda Civic, if you get what I'm saying. <laughs> Right, they would rather yeah. cry while rich, and belittle people, and and look at themselves as a terrible person, because they're rich, you know. And I feel like social media, I call it a toxic currency, right? Likes and follows and stuff are a toxic currency nowadays that all these streamers just flock around, you know. And I I have always. You know, I haven't fallen into the complete algorithms for everything, but I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll do like clickbait stuff on YouTube, but that's the extent to that I'll go. I'll never, and I mean never, like purposely bait somebody into my content because I'm a firm believer if my content's good, then I'll attract what, like, good people. Does that make any sense? So that's just how I look at content. Um, I, I definitely think. A lot of people don't realize that and i hope it's a huge wake-up call for a lot of people um the the what you're talking about is i i can almost guarantee that you don't do clickbait what you yeah. do is to me the distinction between clickbait and between advertising yeah. is honesty mm -hmm. you know if you're like i did the craziest thing you know you'll never believe whatever yeah if you really had some crazy thing that it happened to you, that's not clickbait. Yeah. You you want you need to convince people to click. That's just marketing. That's advertising. Yeah, okay. Then I feel but, a little bit better. You, but when you have like, you know, the cleavage pic of the girl in a bikini oh, yeah, in your video yeah, and it's like a Mario highlights or whatever. It's yeah. like gone sexual. Th you yeah, know? then you're then you're being deceptive and you're lying. Yeah. 
you no, know, I get but what you're saying. Unfo unfortunately, like you have to, you have to be, you have to do the honest side of clickbait, which I, I, there should yeah. be a different name. I think Veritasium did a video about like, I think it was him basically saying clickbait is like a bad term for what yeah. we all need to do, which is make thumbnails and titles mm -hmm. that convince people to click. You yep. won't succeed. Um, you mentioned like if your content is good then it'll succeed unfortunately that isn't yeah. always the case yeah. and some of my content that i've done and again this is subjective but mm -hmm. i believe it because some of the content the best content i have ever made um that i'm the most proud of that people loved yeah got 300 400 views yep. 500 views i get what you're saying um and you know they took me months to work on and, mm -hmm. and whatever uh so that's the unfortunate truth is that the whole idea of like oh if you're consistent and you make quality stuff you will succeed isn't true sometimes yeah. you're not in the right place at the right time there's so many unknown variables it, that absolutely Very, maximizes yeah. your chances of success um but really the problem that you were touching on is how the success of content is so heavily based upon engagement mm -hmm. and people simply enjoying something doesn't generate as much engagement as people being mad about something yep being divisive having to disagree and that's just the way it is it's a lot easier to say something that makes someone mad and then yeah. makes them comment than it is to say something that makes someone smile and want to pick up their phone and call their mom and yeah. tell them they miss her you know what i mean yeah no, and I, that's just the fact of the matter. I agree. There's a lot of projection nowadays online, too. I feel like a lot of people are rude to other people because they don't want to sit with themselves. You know, I feel like that's, I don't know, back to the therapy conversation. I do think there are a lot of people that need therapy. And I'll never, I'll never say that, like, to their face because that's not, that's not who I am. But I think there are people out there that project their problems onto others to make them forget about their own you know yeah and on the and on the internet this is this is a huge problem i think with content creation and and this mm -hmm. kind of thing has has been uh sort of crucial to what some of my challenges with content creation has been which is people forget that the other person is a human being yeah 100 um, interacting with usernames and avatars or personalities yeah uh is people act differently than than they yep. do if they were in real life in front of the person mm -hmm. and one of the mistakes and that i made and challenges that i made was uh, expecting or treating people who are just random people on the internet mm -hmm. in the same way that i would treat them or i would expect them to behave in real life you know, I spent 10 years as a professional software engineer. Yeah. If somebody came up to me and said something rude to my face, you know, it, like if someone walks up to you and says, you know, some insult about your wife or something, yeah. you know, uh, they'd probably get their fucking nose broken, yeah. right? Yeah. 100%. But like on the internet, they don't have that. They're yep. not, first of all, just th the idea. It's not only seeing someone else's face, like if you're just responding to someone on Twitter, mm -hmm. um, but part of it is the people who have the internet courage to say things in like a Twitch chat to a streamer. A huge part is imagine you having to say those words to someone else and not only see their reaction in real time when you're within arm's reach of them, but have them look in your eyes and see your face if that person would would that person hop into discord turn on their camera and say it no they would feel the shame yep they would be no, self-conscious they wouldn't have the confidence yeah so it, it goes both ways and people forget about the human on the other side um mm -hmm. but there's this weird there's this weird thing and this is getting a little too specific but like I would respond to someone saying something in the internet. If so, if someone were to come up and say some re rude thing, and I responded to them with what I might give them in real life, I look like the bad guy yep. because there's this power dynamic where yep. it's like you talk to your viewers like that. Imagine walking up to your coworker mm -hmm. and saying that they're they're 
mother's ugly. Yeah. You wouldn't if do you got, it. Yeah. If you yeah. got your yeah. teeth knocked out or or if you got called an <laughs> asshole and fired yeah. from your job or, you know, or or someone called you a douchebag, you would look like a disgusting yep. monster. And they would be the person that everybody would be like, yeah, that's fucked up. I don't know why they would say that. What a terrible yeah. person, like whatever. But on the internet, change the dynamic. And now, you know, the guy who is keeping it real is like this yep. arrogant monster douchebag. bad guy, yep. So, so the interesting thing is that the way that, that I'm supposed to respond, the way that content creators are expected to respond is to think, that's just a random Twitch chatter troll. They aren't a human. I'm not going to even pay any mind to what they yep. say, and I'm going to ignore them and dehumanize them. So it's forcing us to dehumanize the people that we're trying that we I think we should humanize. Yep. And and at the same time them saying, "Wow, you dehumanize me," while forcing me to dehumanize you to survive mentally and mm -hmm. emotionally. It's this terrible dynamic that it forces I, everything down yeah. to the lowest common denominator. And yeah, it's... Yep. and I think I think kind of on the opposite side of, of that conversation, right? I feel like one thing that I have an issue with is that I humanize the people that I shouldn't. And I don't I don't mean that in a bad sense in it by any means, but I let the words of people that hate on me impact me so much more than my close friends and the people that actually see my progress like if somebody comes in and says oh you you look like you haven't been to the gym in eight years and i i've been to i went to the gym yesterday i think about that so much more than my my irl friend or my my close online friend says like bro you're looking good like that stuff i i it hurts me because dude that's with why you, 100%. I, tell, I tell my I tell my therapist all the time. I'm like, I don't know how to like balance good versus bad. And so she recommended instead of, you know, screenshotting all the bad, which I told her I used to do. I used to screenshot all the bad and then send it to my friends and be like, oh, look what this guy said. Do you agree with this? To kind of get some like, uh, like, what's the word? Like validation, you know, like to, to know yep. from my close friend, like. Somebody came on TikTok and was like, dude, you look like you're 12 years old and, you know, you look stupid. I'd send it to him. I, I'd send it to my friends. I'd be like, do I actually look stupid? Like, you know, like that type of shit. And so she said to just start screenshotting the positive stuff. And every day that you wake up or every day that you're down on yourself, look at the positive stuff, you know. And that's what she recommended. I've been trying it. It's just hard because I, I'm taught that the positive stuff is from a human but I'm taught that the negative stuff I should ignore. And that that right there is why I don't, what I don't understand is that the person that is spewing negative hate towards me is, can be the same person that spews the positive, right? Because I one thing that I, I have done over the years, um, there was a guy, um, he, he stops by, he's still subbed to me 30 months, one of my best friends now. His name is Potato Gamer. Um, he's probably not in chat watching or anything like that. But uh, he, you know, the old EFTWTF clips and stuff like that, right? And so yep. um, one thing that he did was uh, he was on the EFTWTF, and I used to read the comments because I used to be in some of the videos. And he um, he went on there, and he was like, can we please get this Gino guy? Can we make a petition to get him off of EFTWTF videos? And I took it as a sense of, like, holy shit. Like, I'm just having fun playing Tarkov. Like, what am I doing wrong? And Potato Gamer... Instead of, you know, responding to him and I'm like, oh, dude, like, shut the fuck up. You know, like, be quiet, right? I went to his channel. I went to one of his videos and I said, hey, man, I watched it through. I was like, damn, this is actually pretty good content. And I, I reacted. I was like, hey, I'm a big fan of uh, big fan of videos like this. Like, keep doing what you're doing. Completely out of the ordinary. Nobody does this anymore because everybody just fights negativity with negativity, right? So i went to his channel and, and spread like you know a good message right like hope you're having a good day big fan of this content like keep doing this and he went to my channel he watched a few videos of mine and he was like dude you're such a good dude like even if you weren't a good dude like your your content's really good and yeah. he was like i apologize and he came in the stream and he was like man i just want to apologize for everything that i said you know, I've had some significant hate towards you in my life, and I just want to say sorry. 
and that was one I that was one example that I have of turning somebody like like I said with the negativity and positivity, right? When somebody comes into my channel and says a negative thing, I think that I can change them to say something positive. When in reality, I can't. Bro, right? you're you are speaking my right, like you you're you're talking about something that was like six months of therapy for me. Yeah, no, yeah, that and I'm still going through that therapy, right? Like it's just hard for me to determine like when I do get negative comments, it's I can't just ignore it because constructive criticism is a thing. But I also but but, but, but it's yeah, yeah, you yeah. it's never constructive. Yeah. <laughs> it's never it's because it, if it was yeah. constructive, it wouldn't hurt so bad. Yeah. No, one hundred percent. Dude, I'm I'm with you. I'm totally fucking with you, man. It hurts. You, you have so I totally agree in that like for me. And this is something that like you can't you can't say mm -hmm. or admit we're gonna do it because yeah. we're real <laughs> fucking humans. Yeah. I don't care I don't care how yeah. it would be interpreted or whatever by people who don't understand. Yeah. Um but I'll read three hundred positive comments mm -hmm. and that makes me feel this good. I'll read one negative comment and that's this bad. Yep. And and it's I'm the same way. it's unfortunate, but here's the deal. That's because, at least for me, and and for you, I'm sure too, to yeah. a, a slightly less degree. I had 30 years of living as a normal human being, not chronically online, mm -hmm. to where it was very rare. How often do you run into extremely negative, per interpersonal? Yep. No, I agree with you. Like, How often does someone want to mug you in the street or or someone scream yeah. at you on the on the road or whatever? Like it's so rare mm -hmm. that it's like that would fuck up your day, right? If someone's tries to road rage, yep. pull over, want to fight driving in the car or whatever, <laughs> right? Like or, or or some, you know, lady screams at you mm -hmm. in the line at Target or whatever, right? Like those things are like because they're so rare, it's it's it has a disproportionate impact. Yep, it has. So then, yeah. when you have the digital equivalent of that, it's hard to separate it because mm -hmm. it's a human doing something that is so alien that. And but you're you, you, as someone online, you're a content creator. You're supposed to turn off the circuitry and somehow act differently. Mm -hmm. Um. And then on the flip side, I think you're probably a lot like me in that I I try. And this is something that I know when I say there's a certain kind of person that like laughs and snickers and thinks that that the complete opposite is the tr is the truth. Yeah. But I try to be humble. Yeah. I rare I, nowadays. Get, I feel uncomfortable <laughs> when I get praise. It mm -hmm. makes me feel uncomfortable. That's how I am. Yep. I used to be on the baseball team and I remember wanting to cry when I got the MVP trophy when I was like in the 11 year old yeah. all-stars because I, f I felt bad for all of my other teammates who I felt like deserved yep. it. And I didn't want them to be mad at me or to be sad at themselves. And that's how I feel where like someone's like, hey man, your content is so great. And I'm like, I, I have to like not be like, thanks man, I'm the shit. So I'm just like, oh man, thanks. You know, you don't have to just, you know, like, thank you. Like I appreciate it, but like it it's a, it's a different feeling. Yeah. Um, and for a long time, I struggled with that negativity because mm -hmm. I'm like, how how am I supposed to take the good without the bad? Mm -hmm. Either I think of these people as real humans and I take what they have to say at face value like a real human would. If I do that, how can I then when someone says, man, I really don't like this guy. If I found out one of my coworkers didn't like me, I'd be like, I got to. I gotta, did I do something wrong? Like, yeah. what did I, you know? <laughs> yeah. And that would really bother me, and I would want to reconcile that. Yeah. You know? Um, But as content creators, we're told by, you know, like the Reddit toxic community, you know, or or, or some subset of, of Twitch chat or whatever that, bro, why do you care what people think about you? That's like a question that people ask all the time. Like, yep. why do you care? Without actually thinking about, like, Imagine, like, imagine truly not caring what anyone thought. Mm -hmm. That that right there is like people will say how much I care about what people think, and that I'm so narcissistic and arrogant. No, I care about what people think because I'm human. I'm I'm human, yeah. and I am self conscious to a reasonable degree. Mm -hmm. 
where it's like I want to I want people to like me because I like people mm -hmm. and I want to get along with everybody. I never had any. I wasn't the most popular kid in high school, but I was friends with everyone. Yep. I didn't get invited to all the parties, but everyone knew my name mm -hmm. from the nerds to the 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 jocks to the, you know, the goth yep. kids to I, because everyone deserves respect and should be treated mm -hmm. nicely and yeah, dude, I, I'm I'm with you totally yeah. in that it's it's a real struggle because it's really easy. If it, the moment I start thinking, I start walking to walking through the logic, like the steps around, how am I gonna handle the negative thing that this person just said? Mm. And I follow one possible path, and that leads to being a complete narcissist where yep. I, it's just some random person what they say is meaningless and i'm gonna ignore it because it couldn't possibly be real and it couldn't possibly yep. have anything to do blah 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 and it's like that's narcissism it's mm -hmm. not narcissism to want to respond to a human because you think that maybe they have a misunderstanding and you want to try and fix it yeah no, i agree but with you, you but you can't fix everything and there's too many of them there's too many people on the internet for you to have the the reasonable ability to try to remedy that yep and if you do it'll take over your life and it, it for a while it took over my stream and that's why there's a reddit post that's why is veritas such a terrible human being <laughs> and with Jesus. hundreds of upvotes and responses yeah. all about how all he does is argue blah 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 and and that whole thing everyone's anecdotes first of all half of them are just straight up lies um, yeah. but it's all comes from someone saying something to me that was just stupid, childish, immature, and douchey mm -hmm. and me actually giving them the time of the day and engaging in my attempt to, to fix it because 2% of the time I do that. And we come to the bro. I'm sorry, man. I, I realized like, you're actually really cool. And I made a mistake and I was under a misapprehension mm -hmm. and like, we hug it out, bro. Hug it out. 98% of the time it fails, but the 2% is just enough for me to think that that's, I can do it. Yep. That's exactly and, how I am. And I tried that and it, it, it can't work. It's unsustainable mm -hmm. because it, because you have to invest so much time and attention to it mm -hmm. in that process, you'll get 20 more people saying, why are you giving attention to all these trolls? And then now I have to feel like I have to defend the other guy because I don't think they're a troll. I think they're being honest. That and then, so then you're fighting. <laughs> yeah. Which invites more negativity about whether you should fight or whether you shouldn't fight, which invites yeah. more negativity. And it became a black hole for me yeah. where I couldn't get out of it. I was defending myself, defending other people who were attacking me because of the too much empathy. Yep. It's challenging, man. And we have we should talk sometime offline <laughs> yeah. because you're yeah. the first person who I who actually I feel like genuinely understands what I mean. Jesse mm -hmm. is coming around a little bit yeah. to once he stopped having fun all the time with Tarkov and started to have a little chink in his armor around not being in the greatest mood all the time, yeah. that brings the wall can start to crumble. Yep. And it's self-destructive. It gets self-destructive if you let it, right? It's like one of those things in, in going back to your conversation you said um like things that you can control to try and get somebody else to like you, right? Like if somebody hates you, you want to find out why they dislike you and why they hate you. Then then there are some things that you can't control. And some of those are equally as worse as like, for example, one thing that really fucked me up as a kid is when I was a squeaker. You remember back in the Modern Warfare 2 days, you talked... Everybody, oh, dude, squeaker, like this dude, get this guy out of here. He hasn't hit puberty. And I'm, I'm over there like... How the fuck do I make my voice deeper? I was looking how to get voice mods for Xbox 360. Like I'm so I'm so glad that I didn't get internet online gaming until after I hit puberty. So I <laughs> I never I I missed I, this. Yeah, no, it fucked me up for years. And it still fucks me up because there's some things I can't change, right? Like Oh, and well, some things you shouldn't have to change. Yeah, and I understand that because I, uh, my mom taught me very early to forgive everybody. And I think that's why I'm fucked up sometimes is because I want to forgive the motherfuckers that don't forgive me. You know, even though I do. Yeah, man. Like, um, a little personal, but my mom is very religious. Um, she's a Christian. And so you know how Christians are. They're very forgiving. You know, most of them. 
um, hopefully. Uh, but they're very forgiving, and my mom is very religious towards the fact of, like, you got to forgive somebody to let somebody go. And I think that it, as much as it helps me, it also hurts me. You know how hard it is to forgive somebody that has done you wrong? Or, like, like I'm sure you understand, like, when somebody does you wrong, it is so hard to treat them positively. But you do it anyway, and it hurts you. But it doesn't help them. You know what I'm saying? Like your positive, your positive actions. It's the right thing to do, but it doesn't fix anything except for. Yes, and it doesn't yeah, fucking help anything either. Like for, towards them, right? It might be positive for you to react positively, but it's not helping them change the way that they are. They're just gonna go to another fucking streamer and spew some hate after you just told them that you hope that they get help. It's like a conversation I had with a TikTok viewer a few years ago. Or not a few years, a few months ago. Don't ever stream on TikTok if you do, Veritas. Don't. No. Hell no. There was a guy there, and he came in every single day. He said the same exact thing. He said, I hate you, and I can you block me to get you off my for you page? Like, okay, for one, why Crying the, for attention, bro. Why the he fuck do I have to block you, dude? Just block me yourself. Okay, I'm that tired of seeing you. And I told him it was the 30, this 30 second day of it happening. I counted because that's how empathetic I, I fucking just wanted to change this dude's perspective. He came bro, in. Bro, living rent free in your yeah, head, bro. Living, that's your problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, oh, fucking fuck. forget about him. You know what I'm saying? Like, my mods are like, dude, just stop giving this guy the time of day. It's like, dude, I fucking, I wish I could. You know, but I told him. I, it was the 30 second day. I it got around and I. I looked at him. Well, I, I, I looked at the camera, right? And I told him, I was like, dude, you are the most miserable person I have ever met in my entire fucking life. I hope the best for you. I hope you have a good rest of your day. And I hope that if you ever need help, you get it. And I just left it there. I I blocked him, whatever it may be. I He he responded immediately. He was like, dude, like, like shut the fuck up. Like, I, I'm not getting help. It's like, okay. You're a dickhead, okay? Uh, I hope that you get help. And I got a DM later that day. It was from TikTok, TikTok DM. And it was one of my longtime viewers there. Like, they, I have a little community over there, and they, they stop by and say good morning and stuff. And he said, he was like, I don't think it was right for you to tell that guy to get therapy because that can come off negative. And I told him, I looked at him, or I, I didn't look at him, but I, I messaged him. I was like, Did that Why? ruin your day even more? Because Yeah, <laughs> it did. And I told him, though, what is wrong? Like, he was t he was taking it in a sense of, like, me telling that guy that getting therapy was a negative thing. Like, that I'm trying to be rude towards him. No, I told him, I was like, I told him to get therapy or get help because clearly he's afraid to get help for himself if he's doing this for the 32nd day in a row. And yeah. I truly want the best for everybody. And as much as it hurt me, it, I wasn't meaning it negatively. And he was like, oh, dude, you know, this is, that's ne that's a negative thing. You don't do that, right? Like, you don't tell somebody to get help. It's like, what else am I supposed to fucking do? Do you want me to be negative towards him and I'm then the dickhead? Because you are you hit it on the nail on, nail on the head, right? Whatever the fucking saying is. Whenever I respond to somebody on TikTok, you know what they say? Oh, dude. Uh, fucking, what are you so mad for? I was just joking. They want you to take them seriously while simultaneously not taking them seriously. It's like, how am I supposed to respond? Like, I respond to somebody and I'm like, dude, you're a fucking dickhead. He's like, dude, why are you so, why are you so rude right now? Like, toxic streamer, like, what? The, like, I was joking. You know, and there was a guy the other day. He came in, he said, average Tarkov player build. And I was like, dude, what are you... Like, are you trying? He said you're fat, and I was like, okay. Um, so is this is this productive in any sense? And he was like, dude, I was just joking. Um, I have the same build as you, and I'm fat. It's like, why the fuck are you joking about it? It's like, dog, you're not my homie. Like, here's the thing. Like, one of my buddies IRL could maybe get away with a joke like that because yeah. you know them. You know the things yeah. you could joke about, and you can see their face and you. So yeah. you know. You know when someone, when you have their facial expressions and tone of voice, you can infer n eight billion times more information about yeah. what their intentions are. On the internet, you can't. And these dudes are probably 
your age or younger to the point where they spent so much of their life online that they missed. Nope. They have. They don't th have the they social skills. They communicate via text and yep. emotes. They don't have the social skills to know how. Either that, or they are bullied, or whatever, and have some shit that they need. They're like that's this is them like lashing out or whatever, dude. And yeah. yeah, and and if if you're like me, when you have someone who is like a longtime sub or whatever, who's like an uh, otherwise an ally, yeah. When they they then will have an issue with maybe something that you said or did, mm -hmm. and if that issue is based on maybe a misunderstanding or a misconception. Mm -hmm around like telling somebody that they they seem like they need help is different than being like you are mentally ill you know like that, that, that like those are yeah. two different things one yeah. is it one is like might be insulting and the other is like actual advice caring um you know even so, though they don't deserve it yeah no but like being miss to me one of the hardest things that i sh struggle with is i don't care if people don't like me mm -hmm. i just don't like being misunderstood I agree with that. So yeah. when so when people are like, why are you so angry? You're lecturing this person, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, you don't understand the situation. Let me try to understand. Let me try to explain to you the situation. Because I think most people, if you have the same information, the same perspective, you'll come to the same conclusion. Oh, my bad. You know, but again, when you try to engage with that negativity, because it will be taken out of context or misunderstood by people who just got here halfway through. They weren't mm -hmm. here from the beginning. Um, and because so many of the people on the other side are not engaging in good faith, they have no empathy. They don't care about you. They're not honest. Yeah. Any of those things, 100%. some subset of them. Uh, and it's a, it's a coin flip about whether or not they're the person that you can hug it out with at the end or at the end, they're just going to be convinced you're even worse than they thought before. Yep. Um, it's a coin flip of whether or not it's going to ruin your day or it's going to make you feel good. And by coin flip, I mean 92% of the time it'll be bad. Yeah. And 80 and 8% of the time it'll be good. Yep. Um, so the only way that I've personally, I don't know if this will help you at all, but whenever shit like this happens, mm -hmm. I take a step back and I say, I, I, I want, while I want to ignore them and not think of them as a human being or whatever, and then just, you know, I also don't want to be an arrogant prick who thinks I'm better than all the uh, uh, anonymous usernames. I don't mm -hmm. want to think that. So instead, I'm going to choose to ignore it while being uh, conscious of the fact that it's, it's merely out of practical reasons. Mm -hmm. Nobody... There are people that hate on Deadly Slob. The guy's unhateable. Yeah. Hearing that there are people that hate on you, you're unhateable. Yeah. Okay, so that helps me because I know that nobody, there's nothing you could do to prevent mm -hmm. from being hated by a subset of the people. And some, there's uh, nothing you could do to change some of those people's minds. And trying to do that is an impossible battle that just adds more negativity and creates more of the first kind of person. Mm -hmm. So, so that's why I'm not going to engage, not because I don't think they're worth it, but because the circumstances of the internet, unfortunately make mm -hmm. it impossible. Then I don't feel like a terrible inhuman dickhead. And I also don't have to give it any attention. I think that I think I, that is phenomenal advice. The problem with me is that, and I'm sure you, you used to do this before therapy and stuff like this. No, I, I still do. Trust me. <laughs> that works for me about 80% of the time. Okay. Now. Okay. I'm still yeah. working on so it. So I usually think that way. And then I respond to them because I feel like I'm, I'm ignoring them, but they, they don't deserve the response. It's like a constant battle in my head. It literally is a constant battle in my head. You know what? The, and you know what the problem is? The problem is, is that. You are like me. You're just successful enough mm -hmm. that it's a problem. Mm -hmm. If you had seven viewers, there wouldn't be enough people coming in and out that there would be toxicity. Yeah. You know, if 2% of the population is toxic and you have 200 viewers, that's four people who are going to be toxic. Yeah. If you have seven viewers, you can stream for a month and you that won't get anyone such toxic. such a cool way to look at it. So you literally, it's not a problem, not a problem, not a problem. Suddenly starts to become a problem, gets worse, gets worse, gets worse. And for me, yeah, 
that made me want to get away from Tarkov, get away from whatever, which then slows down your progression. Mm -hmm. And then also some people don't want to watch you if you're constantly engaging negatively, which I can mm -hmm. understand. So that halts your progress, mm -hmm. starts to bring you down just a little bit. If I had, if you had 10,000 viewers, it's easy to ignore when the message is there and then it's gone. But when it's the message is there, and it's just and it's yeah. standing there you can't you can't pretend yeah. like you didn't see it yeah if there's not enough chatters to make it go away yeah. so that's why people like asmin gold can largely ignore yeah. the bullshit and deal with it because it's just not there for long enough yeah but if you have one chat message every 15 seconds it's going to be four minutes until that's gone yeah no i and, and having that part of my therapy is seeing that and, and sitting with that feeling and not engaging, not responding. I need to learn from you, Barrett. <laughs> bro, we both need to learn because I still don't know what the right way to deal with it is. And it's a challenge. And yeah. I don't care that admitting it, admitting yeah. that puts a target on my back. It yep. makes me seem like I'm the, like, it's like telling the bully, you're not going to punch him back. Yeah. Then the bully's just going to fuck with you more. And yep. if that's the way it's got to be, that's the way it's got to be. It's sad for them. But our mental health can't handle trying to fix everybody that doesn't like us for reasons that we don't deserve. Yeah. It's funny. It, a guy from your chat just said your loyal viewers can remove those messages by flooding the chat with gift subs. I'm sure I'm sure you've had your fair share. That is a... <laughs> Especially I think coming the, from uneventful and very generous <laughs> motherfucker. I think the funniest things that have ever been in my stream is when some toxic kid comes in in my chat just like, all right, here's 20 gifted, by the way. Get that motherfucker. <laughs> Now, ha oh, now here's man. a question. Here's a question. Yeah. Have you ever dealt with... <laughs> what a homie, uneventful gift <laughs> we, gifting him right now. We love uneventful Joseph. Thank you for the sub, too. Oh, yeah. Brother, you're buying a house. Stop it. <laughs> um, no, but here's something that I actually struggle with, too. Mm -hmm. If I if I have that, like, the, the pain in my chest that I get sometimes from, like, a misunderstanding or feeling like someone, you know... Whatever, mm -hmm. right? That negative feeling. I, I'm gonna. It's so hard for me to say this because it's like this is a double-edged sword. Yeah. But imagine you're in a bad mood, and then at the same time, someone walks up and is like, "Here's twenty bucks." Y you like are thankful, but it doesn't make you feel better, and then you feel guilty that you're mm -hmm. not happy and more thankful. There are times where like I'll get a bunch of gift subs, and I'm like. I can't be, I'm not going to fake what I'm feeling. I'm not going to be like, oh, give subs, yeah, to try to get more or whatever. Mm -hmm. So there are times where that kind of generosity coming from a good place makes me feel more guilty. I, uh, ironically. Dude, it makes I, that's me feel literally more me the past few weeks. Tarkov has been so fucking bad for me. I've survived like two raids in the past week besides yesterday. Two raids in the past week. And I'll get so down on myself. I'm like, I like have, so I have silent panic attacks and I'm just open with chat. I'm like, dude, I'm having a panic attack right now. And they'll give subs, you know, five subs. Here, yo, <sighs> here, here you go. Here you go. Here's five subs. I'm sorry to hear about your pain. It's like, dude, I then feel bad. I don't have panic attacks and it's hard for me. I feel so. bad for expressing the fact that I have a panic attack because it makes people more generous. And I don't want people to, to give subs based on gener or based on me having a bad day i want them to give subs because they enjoy the content or not in, like not even give subs at all i yell yeah, at people man. when they give subs because i don't know how the fucking say thank you the 20 gifted you just spent what i usually spend over a week on food like how yeah. do i respond to you you know and it's just it's a it's, weird it's, dynamic dude it this is. is why it's so fucking challenging it's so much more challenging than people think yep. because it's like bro you're playing video games all day yeah. and you're making money from it. And then someone just gave you a bunch of money. Why are you not happier? Yeah. And it's like, there's just so much more, you know, like imagine someone's parents died in a car accident and then the next day they win the lottery and people are like, why aren't you happy? I'm sorry. That's, it doesn't, it's no. not, that's yeah. not going to change how I feel about whatever. I'm not excited about a thing. Maybe I would be in a different circumstance, you know, whatever. But like, this is this is how I think a lot of a lot of content creators. My my guess is that a lot more people experience this without talking about it, um, maybe than we think. Uh, and for a long time, I felt like I was I was the problem. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm not perfect by all means. I've made a bunch of mistakes. The number of times I've DM'd somebody after a stream, a viewer, and, and apologized. I do, I, do, I do that all the time. And, and here's the thing. I don't do it because I want the people on Reddit to change their opinion. I do it because I might have made a mistake. I might have had a bad day, mm -hmm. said a thing I regret. And mm -hmm. and I, it, the right thing to do is respond to them. But there's the the irony around no one... The people who think that you're an arrogant douchebag who never admits you're wrong or whatever, they aren't going to hear about all of the other things that prove them wrong. And it would be disingenuous for you to be like, hear all the nice things I've done to make up for the mistakes I've made. Mm -hmm. So they'll never know. And if they did know, well, then that kind of calls into question your motives because then it's public. Mm -hmm. So it's this weird fucking dichotomy of, I, I don't know, man. I, I'm, I've been health, ranting all about no, this. No, no, it's all good because it, it, it's funny you mentioned that a, a lot of the like creators, I'm, you said that I'm sure they deal with it. They just don't talk about it. I will tell you right now, every single guest, including yourself, Veritas, had, it, this is the reason I started a podcast like this because it allows to get get a story like you're sharing. You know, like you have problems with dealing with these these negative people and what you do to deal with this or how you have dealt with it over the years. The 14 guests, all 14 of them, have had something similar to this, to where they feel as though they 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 have a problem with streaming, and it could be you know something a problem with uh, haters. You know, Vel is a big example of this. Velian gets a lot of hate, you know, and there are some people that hate him and he has responded in a way and he's figured out a solution for him. But there's also people that deal with other streaming issues like burnout and, and imposter syndrome. It's a very real thing. It really is. Um, it's just, it, it's just, unfortunately, it's how streaming is. And I hate saying that because I feel like one of those dudes that's like, oh, dude, well, just don't worry about the... The negative people because it's just how streaming it, it, it you oh my god i'm sorry i'm going off on a tangent too the worst is ev whenever i'm responding the people that hate have hateful comments and they said it's the internet homie like you got to deal with it so like right, that's the most i i fucking hate disconnected like i hate like you're 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 taking away from the issue that i'm trying to say here is that you're that person is not a good person why do i have to be a numb person to be able to deal with people on the internet, right? Like, why do I have to be a negative person? It just doesn't make any sense. Do they walk up to the veteran that just lost their leg and say it was war? Why are you upset about your losing yeah. your leg? Right? Like, what? Like, you? Any of the things that these people do on the internet, yeah. if they apply to any remotely similar analogous situation, mm -hmm. they'd realize how fucked what they're doing is yeah. imagine showing up just opening the door uninvited to a birthday party and and screaming like i don't like your face to like the the person whose party it is yeah and then be like what <laughs> i'm just some random guy why would that upset you yeah it's like you'd get your ass kicked and thrown out of the party why like who, you but they would never yeah. do that but they would come into a stream and be like what is this terrible content i'm out yeah. Nobody invited you. Like, what do you say? Like, yeah. you know, but. <sighs> no, I get I get what you're saying 100%. We relate wholeheartedly. Um, it's something that, unfortunately, us creators deal with quite a lot. Um, I do want to move on. I want to go to, you know, more of a, maybe an upbeat subject. Um, you've done so many good things, Veritas. Uh, you know, what? I got to ask, what's been your favorite thing over the years uh, that you've done? Growing the stream, making Battle Buddy, YouTube, music. Like, what has been some of the favorites that you've done over the past few years? Because you've done a lot. Um, So, back in, I think it was 2018 or 2019. Mm -hmm. um, during Twitch drops, mm -hmm. I did my first, I think it was one of, it might have been my only ever 24-hour stream. Mm -hmm. um, average concurrent viewers of 102,000. 24 hours straight Jeez. and i raised over a hundred thousand dollars for charity in That's one day so awesome for uh um uh an animal charity there was like a no-kill animal shelter yeah um that's awesome yeah best friends animal society and that was the by far like be, being able to use that opportunity mm -hmm. 
not to make a billion dollars for myself but to do something meaningful and inspirational mm -hmm. i was in tears at the end of that stream man like it's, it's a it's a good feeling yeah i mean that's everything else everything else that comes f from inspiring people i mean a number of people have gone and gotten literal college degrees mm -hmm. inspired by me I, I didn't want to get into programming now i want like that's the kind of stuff that's, that's meaningful awesome. to me like yeah. making a difference everything else is just entertainment yeah no i agree it's it's pretty cool being able to inspire people you know on, on the mental health side of things you get a lot of comments like you know i had a bad day today and you helped me through it or you know I, and i'm sure you've dealt with this as a streamer you know for so long but people will message you sometimes like bro you saved my life in a time that i was going through a really rough time and stuff like that really just opens our eyes you know it really it's does insane. yeah um i did want to talk about um you get to sit down every single week i think uh with your friend jesse uh which you guys have a uh, podcast together called podcast um which i should say really motivated me i told you that before um if you could sp explain podcast to others what is it and how has me how has been creating podcast content um i mean for a long time it was my therapy uh mm -hmm. the, the the podcast it started off mm -hmm. mostly as like me and jesse talking about tarkov yeah and has slowly moved off of being entirely about tarkov to only being partially about tarkov sometimes we have an episode dedicated only to tarkov sometimes mm -hmm. it's 30 percent tarkov sometimes it's 10 percent tarkov um mm -hmm. we, we we say we talk about the poggers things in life it's all the it's whatever we're interested in like we talk about whatever we feel like talking about that's awesome that's um, always the best and, podcast <laughs> yeah and, and being able to vent and mm -hmm. say out into words how i'm feeling about something to somebody who can understand me Mm -hmm. as opposed to just into the ether out into an anonymous list of usernames mm -hmm. um has been really great yeah uh especially seeing jesse go from a bright-eyed bushy-tailed uh always constantly positive happy you know optimistic guy to being a grizzled cynical person <laughs> who sees all of the problems it's yeah. it's been bittersweet yeah. because it's sad but at the same time it's it's for a long time in my therapy mm -hmm. sessions my therapist would ask me how who's a content creator you like want to be more like like what would your end goal be and mm -hmm. i'm like you know seeing someone like jesse who yeah. you know can let that stuff roll off his shoulders and then finding out that like he's more like me you know and more human yep. it, it, it in a way it's like sad that oh, i wish he was just happy all the time but at the same time finding out you know uh whether his thoughts about tarkov or c mental health content creation stuff mm -hmm. is more like me it's like oh maybe maybe i'm not so bad maybe yeah. i'm not so crazy you know 100%. whatever it yeah. makes you feel it may it uh it gives you validation right and it, it makes you realize that you know even the most positive people in the world can have a side to them where they're realistic you know and i'm not saying po positive people aren't realistic but I've, I've definitely learned over the years um there are there is such thing as toxic positivity and i'm a firm believer in that yeah, like when 100%. somebody comes in and they're like oh i'm having a bad day i'll never tell somebody like you'll get you'll get you'll get over it or or you know t um, tomorrow's a new day like i sometimes say that depending on the conversation but I want people to realize that it's okay to feel things. It's okay to be human, which I feel like people don't realize is a very real thing nowadays. The reason that you're sad and the reason that you're going through a rough day is because we have things called emotions. And so many people nowadays, they want to, you know, smoke something or they want to drink their sorrows away. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I guess it is. Uh, it might be a bad thing, but... It you know can what I'm be, saying? It's not it by definition necessarily. Yeah, exactly. And it's just like one of those things where it, toxic positivity is a real thing. You know, you can't you can't be toxic towards you can't be positive towards people that need positivity. You got to be like if somebody's going through a really negative time, you you often need to uh, uh what's the what's the word like val 
Valify, like validate, validate their negative emotions, right? Tell yeah, them what you okay. feel, what you feel is yeah. reasonable and you can feel that. Yeah. I always, and that's okay, my number and I'm one, with you. yeah, my number one thing with telling people that are going through a rough day and you can ask my close friends, like you're valid. Like that's one of my favorite things to say is because it's real. Like what you're experiencing right now is true. You are a human being. You do not have to be happy all the time. And my therapist tells me all the time, like, life is like you, sometimes life can be 60% negative. It's okay to live in that negative, right? And I, I tell people all the time, it's a very deep hitting quote um, that I, I saw years ago. I don't know the author of it. Instead of, instead of running away from the storm of life, sometimes you got to learn how to dance in the rain. And I'm a firm believer in that. You know, you got to learn how to deal with your emotions and you have to deal with that storm instead of running away from it, right? Because you appreciate the rainbow and the sun so much more than before. You know, it, it, when you start appreciating the rainy days, you'll appreciate the days that it's hella sunny out. You know, and yeah, that's how I, how I look at life. You know, it's getting into a deep conversation, but this is how I look, look at life. It's... I get... <sighs> Two things I think, yeah, to say here. One, rather than say, you know, don't worry, tomorrow will be better. Yeah. To me, I think like the important thing th is the distinction between that, like smile. I hate hearing. Well, I hate when people say smile. Like, yeah, ugh, it yeah. creeps me the like, fuck out. Shut up. Um, but like, it's not that tomorrow will be better. Yeah. Because it might not be. It's that tomorrow can be better. Yes. It can be. So people yes. don't give up hope. That's the worst, right? Yep just knowing you know that like how many how many situations things have felt bad and mm. then they've just gotten better it's just like things th things will be better mm -hmm. don't worry like li you deal with whatever you got to deal with mm -hmm. and and, and the, the other thing is like I i've learned this from being married for this year it's going to be 10 years um congrats dude me I and my wife <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Me and my wife have <laughs> we we definitely follow the the male female stereotype. Yeah. In that, my wife will come, and she has a problem. She wants mm -hmm. to vent about it. Right. There's a stereotype where like women aren't looking for the solution. Yeah. I'm like, here's how we can solve the problem. <laughs> she doesn't. She just wants to be heard. Yeah. She just wants to vent and have someone validate. Listen that's that's yeah. that's you, you're you're real to feel that that's challenging that's hard they don't need a fucking solution it's not about a solution it's just about wanting to vent and be heard mm -hmm. and men men need to be more like women i don't give a fuck about the whole masculinity <laughs> I bullshit do, i agree with that women are just better than men yeah. and men need can learn so much from from women um and that's one of those things that uh sometimes you just need to 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 talk be heard and vent and it's mm -hmm. not always necessarily about having a fucking solution yeah um it's just wanting to be heard so many people want to be validated so many people want to understand that they their issues are real you know and i feel like that's the problem with today's world is that there are a lot of people out there that don't necessarily feel like their issues are real so they go to somebody and the other person will like try and distract that person and I'm, I'm not saying distraction is a bad thing but i i'm a firm believer that you have to deal with something before you can move past it you know breakups for example i think the best thing that i ever did while i was going through my breakup was realize that i have to i have to cry i have to go through those bad days i have to go through those memories you know and i can't always distract myself because it will come back eventually you know it's um, I saw a really good Ill or a, a very good video. It's going to be hard to explain it through voice, but it was a video of somebody filling up a cup. And um, when you when you fill up a cup, right, with water, they put like ping pong balls and stuff like that, and like uh, like little pieces of paper. And when you start to fill up the cup with joy, joy and stuff and, and happiness, right? When water is the happiness, those ping pong balls and those pieces of paper are your problems. When you start to fill that cup up everything comes up to the surface it floats on top of the joy and so it's it's crazy to think right like you experience the most 
the the hardest days of your life when you're about to get something good if that makes sense right and i there's yeah. a, there's a quote out there like in regards to like jobs and stuff and and goals and stuff is that the hardest days are going to be the 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 days before you complete your goal you know and and so many people want to quit at that that top part where their where their goal is right around the corner but they want to quit because they feel as though it's getting worse but in reality it has to get worse before it you complete that goal or get better, you know, and so many quit people quit there, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it, yeah, hundred percent, dude, this is like, this is a perfect tie into someone recently came into the stream and, and I don't know if this is, you know, the best advice or whatever, but they basically said, you know, that they recently had, uh, you know, lost, um, uh, the, you know, they had a, a breakup because mm -hmm. their uh, significant other was unfaithful mm -hmm. and like, there's nothing that I could say, that's going to make yeah, that hurt any exactly. less. All I could say was you're going to feel what you're going to feel. You got to deal with it, push through however you need to. Mm -hmm. But I shared my perspective, I guess, in that I was with in college was with somebody for four years that mm -hmm. I was convinced we were going to get married. You know, like that was that was yeah. the plan. Um, and I found out that she cheated on me and that was obviously like one of the hardest things I ever had to deal with. Um, but the way I look, it, it, the way I look at that now is I am, am glad that that happened because now fast forward and I'm with my, my wife and we're so happy and it's going to be fucking 10 years. And so like that person cheating on me was the best thing that ever happened to I, me that's what i say with breakups now that's not that's not to say i worded it better than i just did now mm. because you can't be like they did you a favor because that feels yeah, shitty yeah you, know? you can't but yeah but it's just like to know that it, it, it this isn't the end it's not over mm. that good things can come from this and there's nothing you're going to say that's going to change the way that they feel, mm -hmm. but you might be able to change their outlook and their, yep. how they, how they feel about the future versus how they feel about the past. Mm -hmm. You can, you can give them perspective on the future yeah. Um, rather than change how you feel now yeah. or what happened in the past. I agree. That's, that's up to them. I tell people all the time that the breakup that I had, even though it was the shittiest thing I've ever been through, it was the best thing that has ever happened to me. And I, I always try and tell people when they come in, I say, you know, I really wish people real like people take breakups as a super negative thing. And they and I, I'm not saying it's not negative. I'm, I fully understand that breakups are terrible. They're not good. Nobody wants to go through a breakup. But I I think for men is specifically or well, especially it, I think breakups can be one of the best thing that has ever happened to a man you know whether it was the other person's fault or not that that's not a conversation because there's nobody a relationship's 50 50 right you know it, you know there are some uh, are some things to where it is the other person's fault or they did that that you did this right uh, but people need to realize in men specifically is that it can be the best thing that has ever happened to you if you let it that's the problem with a lot of with some people nowadays is that they don't allow the future to be better than the past because they are stuck in the past. If yeah. that makes any sense, that's why memories suck so much. You know, feel those memories so you don't have to feel it tomorrow. You know, feel it next week, right? If you if you see a picture or something, look at it for a quick second. You might cry. You might you might be sad for the rest of the day, but don't distract your like. Don't, oh, oh, I'm throwing my phone away. I don't, like, delete photo Like, delete photos, right? But, delete, like, look at it, process it, and then move on from it. So you don't have to deal with it later, you know? And I, I feel like that's something that's not, not talked about a lot. Um, yeah, man. You know how it, it's 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 hard. But uh, moving on, I wanted to do, like, a, a little hot take. If you could tell one person how to grow their stream in 2024 in one sentence, what would it be? Um, I I arrogantly think that I I have the best advice on this. <laughs> um, okay. Because most people will answer with "be consistent, set a schedule," <laughs> yeah. and I actually think that that 
is not great advice. Yeah. Um, it that's a requirement. It just goes without saying. <laughs> um, let let me let me let me put it this way. Mm -hmm. I'll recreate. I have a clip on my stream where if you come in and you do streamer tips exclamation point streamer tips it's it's my advice that is a series of questions mm -hmm. as opposed to a statement and what i did was this was like five years I ago i saw this when, clip i think <laughs> where i basically said okay so you want to stream let's say tarkov for example yep. and i went into the tarkov category and i just yep. started scrolling and i said how is anybody going to find you if they find you why is anybody going to stay? Yep. If they stay, why is anybody going to follow you? Mm -hmm. If they follow you, why are they ever going to come back? I saw this clip. B but you, you have to ask yourself, what sets you apart? What mm -hmm. makes you unique? If you try to do the thing everybody else did that made them successful, you're mm -hmm. like everyone else, and, and everybody's been smushed down to yep. the same thing. You want to... Mm -hmm. You need to stand out in some way. You need to do something different. You need to do something unique. Otherwise, what the fuck are you doing? Yep. You're just going to fit within the crowd. And then the crowd is a very competitive space. Not saying that, you know, doing your your own unique thing is going to provide instant success. It's not, right? But being unique is a lot, is going to allow people to stay, you know? And yeah. I, I, I always tell people that are starting out streaming is that, it doesn't necessarily matter how many people you can get in your stream. It matters how many people ca you can get to stay in your stream. And I don't mean that in, in in like a toxic or, you know, oh, you must stay in my stream sort of thing. But you know how we are and how us streamers think, right? We want them when, to want to come back. Like one of the best feelings, and I'm I'm sure I can speak for yourself, Bertas, is one of the best feelings is somebody subscribing. Like not, not so I, <laughs> it sounds like monetary gain and, and shit like that. One of the best feelings is when a longtime subscriber resubs. It's not the money necessarily. It's the fact that they've been around for so long and you can track how many months they've been fucking subbed to you and that yeah, they want to support you. You know, it's like one of the best feelings, you know. So um, speaking about longtime subs, we are kind of going to get into a section that we like to call the throwback section. I'm going to unrelease my camera again, and we are actually going to stream. Um, funny enough, we are actually going to stream. Uh, let me see here. This. Uh oh. Um, this. Let me see. And then. I'm so scared again. <laughs> so this is a podcast script, but I have up here a few tabs that we have here. Um, first off. Um, going down here, uh, let me, let me, I always have some explanations. Let's take a trip down memory lane. You can see this. We're all set up, right, Veritas? We're good to go? Uh, you can, you can, you can see my screen and stuff? I can see, okay. yeah. I found your first ever tweet. Um, it was back December 28th, 2017. Whether this was your personal tweet, I don't know. Uh, or like personal, I don't know if you have a personal Twitter. But this was your first ever tweet. December 28th, 2017. It was you linking a YouTube video. Of you killing some Summit 1G. Um, I don't know specifically. Oh my god. This was before I streamed. Yeah, so this, I, I found your first ever tweet. I, I don't have the volume up too loud. But you killed um Summit in PUBG. So that's pretty fucking cool. Yeah, back in the day. I was top, I was top five North America in oh, PUBG. Oh shit, so you... It was me, Visions, Choco Taco <laughs> were... were Oh yeah, shit! Dude. That was when that was a, <laughs> and of course that was just days. like one of those one of those shameless kind of like, yeah. you know maybe maybe I'll get noticed, mm -hmm. you know the kind of naive yeah. sort of thing. Uh, what, you know, look, I mean, look at you here, <laughs> bro! Oh, the I'm days, telling you, man, bro! I feel like a god watching this old you know, PUBG <laughs> content. I wish I could. Uh, I wish oh, I could. Oh fucking... man, I found your first ever tweet. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this video, but I had to. I had to point out. I was 16 when this happened. I'm 22 now, by the way. Jesus um, Christ. Yeah, just to uh, you know, rub that in your face for you. My um, first stream was March of 2018. So this was three months yep. before I started streaming. Yeah. So you had a weird. It was very weird. This was your first ever tweet, and then you you tweeted a lot of YouTube videos and stuff. I think you had like one of those automatic bot things where every time you uploaded the YouTube, it it made a tweet about it too. Probably. And so that's what I found a lot of the tweets. So it was hard to sift through all this, but I got it. Okay, no worries. Okay, I would like to point out this is when you were first starting. This didn't get one like, one repost, or anything. 
this was you just killing Summit, the good old days, man. Um, oh now, I do want to take, uh, uh, it was kind of like early stream stuff. It's a hilarious picture. Tarkov content tonight. Don't miss it. This had one like, and I thought this is fucking hilarious. Bro, I have a whole <laughs> video series called <laughs> Welcome it? to Hell. <laughs> Have you seen that? No, I haven't. But... It's literally, it's literally, I wanted to learn. Yeah. I wanted to do something unique. Yeah. And I wanted to learn how to do green screen. I have an entire video series where there's one where me, I'm running around yeah. having a gunfight in dorms. Green screen oh myself my in. Oh my God. And this think, is me. Wait, I think I do remember that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this is literally like a fever dream I had. Yeah. Uh, yeah, where I'm basically literally doing uh, Carry On My Wayward Son, and I recorded a cover of it, literally, and yeah. then I... Yeah, it's fucking the stupidest thing ever. But it was like, I'm I'm gonna <laughs> try to be creative, try to be unique, yeah. try to do something different. Yeah. It, nobody fucking, like, a few people loved it, but no, it didn't blow up or anything. Yeah. But hey, you try something, you fail, you try something new, you fail, but this was me practicing <laughs> I what I the now drummer, preach. I love how the drummer is shirtless. They do like, yeah. <laughs> He's just like, yeah, let's, funny, let's yeah. It. No, this is good, Veritas. This is very good. Um, now, I usually like doing tweets and stuff with this stuff, but I also like going back in old clips. Now, um, I have two clips here today. I'm going to turn off uh, this right here so I can turn this up a little bit. Um, I have your first clip here. I don't know if you remember this, but uh, this is five years ago. It has 900 views. I thought it was hilarious. So we're going to play that now. Um, I'm going to go to the full screen for you. Oh my God, I'm scared. And go work on the app. Oh, Ooh. I think this was like viewer kits. Yep, it was. And, um... Oh, my God. Yeah, somebody gave you uh, what looks like a Geno viewer kit here. Oh, this wasn't but what I thought I it was going to be. I wanted to bring back the oh, fact shit. Yes, it was. that there was a thick case in a backpack. The good old days of Tarkov. Anybody in here that has played Tarkov in the past is foaming out the mouth right now. Because we used to take two of these bad boys in the labs and loot it. Remember that, yeah, Veritas? My, <laughs> my, the video, uh, up until my recent one, yeah. the video that got the closest to a million views was me during a uh, the Raiders were in factory yeah. during an event. And I filled... Yep. Two thick item cases, <laughs> full. In one in one raid, I got like eighty something kills. Would, that that was probably the best performing video. These were the days, bro. Holy I shit! Would like to put, okay, so done. redundant armor. Okay, and the TV one ten on top of it. I would yep, like to you, point out <laughs> because you could do that back then. You could stack it. Oh man, in no inertia. You're hardly <laughs> overweight. Sixty seven. You have a six KD. Look at those stats, bro. I love how oh, back that, well, in the that was already when I was on the decline. Yeah. I don't know about all that. Lot, it used to be a lot higher than that, but Yeah, well, this is this looks like a Tarkov streamer survival rate like my own, so no worries. Now, this is <laughs> these are the days, man. 2400 raids, man. Back in the day. Back in the day, this was I I thought this was hilarious. I wanted to bring back everybody that played Tarkov in the past is foaming out the mouth from the fact that you can equip two things at once um and the thick case in the backpack. Uh, so I thought that clip was funny. And then uh, one of the last clips, uh, I should point out that, um, uh, let's just say, uh, you had a streamer item back then before the guitar pick? Um, <laughs> I think I know. This is the, the handrail. Midwest six and a half inch. Fuck, you guys <laughs> found my streamer item. <laughs> <laughs> the Midwest six and a half inch. <laughs> I love your face after Found it. Found my streamer <laughs> item. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Must be nice packing that much, Veritas. I'm gonna be honest with you. I think that's what uh, that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was fucking no hilarious, dude. Five years ago, I find I found that clip today. Who would have thought we're watching that in 2024? Uh, this is before the Veritas guitar pick and all of that. That's that's uh, so so awesome. Um, that is the throwback section. We do have one more question, but I wanted to show some uh, throwback tweets and throwback uh, uh, stuff like that. I love always doing that with the guests. It's like everybody's favorite like uh, is the throwback section there. I do got to ask, uh, before we move on to the next question, do they do they contact you for a streamer item? Or is that NDA'd? Um, it, that might be NDA'd, but... 
No, nah, not NDA. I mean, it's really super informal. Yeah. Um, at, at one point, I think Nikita was like, "If you had a streamer, I'm like, what would you want?" Yeah. And I and I said, so what I said was, I would love it if there was a imagine a, a weapon case size. Mm -hmm. But it was a guitar case, oh. and it could hold streamer items. Oh, so it was a really efficient way of storing all your streamer items. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's what I asked for. And he yeah. was like, got anything else to maybe a little bit simpler? And I was like, all right, a guitar pick. And yeah. then he actually even went so far as to ask me what thickness of guitar pick, like how many millimeters, because you buy oh, guitar picks in different that's sizes. Sick. And it's like in the flavor text, which yeah. is just like such a little thing. I was like, damn, that's that's cool as yeah. fuck that he asked. I wonder, I wonder, so I don't know if they have plans to get any more uh, streamer items, but I guess if they do have any plans, they'll, they might ask you is what you're saying? They might? Or like, like what you want? Or do you think I they, think, do you think they just I, know nowadays? It depends. Like, I feel like some of them are, they become memes, they become more... Mm -hmm like obvious kind like of Gingies, you know like, right like it's like a she's lucky she finds all those keys and stuff so makes sense yeah, right I, yeah so okay i don't know i i honestly don't yeah, know for sure well getting moving on to the next question the throwback question uh would you change anything in your journey journey as a creator or would you have tried something different uh if you had to do it again or would you just stay the same um the the like Everything involving that the mental health struggle that we talked yeah. about of like re responding, reacting to things that I would, if I could go back, I would mm. respond differently, yeah, um, in a a more productive, potentially healthier way, yeah. Uh, otherwise, everything I've done, I've done because not for to maximize views, not to maximize clicks or money, mm -hmm. but because it was the best content that i thought i could make because i was inspired yeah. and i wanted to be creative and i wanted to try something new and uh so yeah i don't have any regrets or anything i changed okay. there yeah that's i mean that's most people's answers right a lot of people i always tell people it's not about the uh it's not about the destination it's about the journey you know and i i i've asked uh, the question before like if you could if you could start again and instantly have twitch partner would you nobody has said yes right if you could start again and instantly have twitch it's about that grind to twitch partner that makes people appreciate streaming and content creation so much more you know yeah. it teaches them who they are right um speaking about who they are we're gonna move on to one of the last sections the life and mental health section i do want to say though before we get into the deep questions i wanted to ask about what you did before content creation um what have been some of your hobbies or jobs that you've done um anything in particular you want to share i've got kind of a wild I know. I think I History. saw a tweet, like, I want to say a few months ago where it was, like, <clears throat> jobs you've had before content creation. I think you did a tweet on it, I think. Um, and I saw... Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, but there I, was so, a point. When I was 18 in high mm -hmm. school, I got my real estate license, and I sold real estate. Okay. So, so I was a realtor in high school. Um, I then uh, got a job working at State Farm. I got my property and casualty insurance license okay. when I was 19 and 20 and sold insurance Jeez. while I was in college for my undergrad, which was in business, um, decided about three quarters of the way through that I wasn't interested in mm -hmm. business. It yeah. felt too slimy and the whole like bro call, it wasn't quite that like it is now because it was mostly like 50 year old men, not yeah. like 27 year old men who yeah. drive Bugattis or whatever <laughs> the memes are. Right. Yeah. Um, the whole like bro culture around grinding networking to make all that money there was a period where that's what i wanted to be like wolf of wall street rich guy whatever yeah i quickly realized like in order to succeed you either have to be right place right time or which is like two percent of the people 98 percent of the people succeed by being slimy and i didn't want to do that mm -hmm. um so i lost interest so then i ended up going back getting my master's degree in computer science mm. um started my own business during that process doing software consulting oh, and, yeah. and development um mm. and with a business partner of mine and then i worked it uh for for the next 10 years basically i worked as a professional software engineer in um doing some like uh, working at a company that was related to like emergency alerting yeah um like okay. public 
health stuff, and then went to one that was a um, a startup company that was a social media company. Um, ended up eventually in the robotics industry, um, doing software, you know, related to that. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah, as a hobby, I just it was at the tail end of that where I started streaming and making YouTube. Mm -hmm. Um. Man. Yeah. So you, you, I mean, I feel like I should be doing something right now. I've I've never had a real job. I've started off streaming. You know, and I I I consider I mean the, the, I consider streaming a real job. I just say real job in a sense of like motherfuckers will always say that it's not real, so I just <laughs> don't call it a real job. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's better than some jobs, worse than other jobs. Mm -hmm. It's it's uh, it's not just playing video games all day. Yeah. And Anybody that thinks that that's what it is, um, is like, yeah, working at McDonald's is just making hamburgers, and yeah. being an astronaut is just riding amusement rides. That's well, such a good analogy. I'm about to start using that. That's so good. You well, can probably come up with better examples than I just yeah. did off the dome, but uh, there you go. Yeah, 100. percent No, that's 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 such a good analogy. Um, moving on to some of the deeper questions. I should point out, um, I always say this to guests. I don't think any of the questions you're not going to want to answer, but if you don't want to answer them, feel free not to just, you know, tell, tell us to move on. But most people, it's, it's not that bad of questions. Um, we touched on earlier on how real you are within the Tarkov community. You've always been the first to mention a core issue. Like always, you're always the first one to do so. Um, I have to ask outside of games, have you always been this way? Like pointing out issues or n in, not in, not in like a negative sense, but you've always... You've always been that guy that's like, oh, this is a problem or or this can be an issue in the future. Have you been like that in IRL situations? Um, I mean, before being an engineer, mm -hmm. not really. Yeah. Because in, in like a lot of other situations, you don't want to be that guy. Yeah. But spending a decade as an engineer is my job. Like li engineering is identifying problems, solving problems. Mm hmm. So being the one to point out that there's a problem, mm -hmm. identifying the problem and trying to recommend solutions. Yeah. If you don't do that as an engineer, it's like if you're a fireman and you drive by a, a house that's on fire, I'm not at the, I'm not at the station and the <laughs> alarm bell isn't ringing, so I'm just going to keep driving. I yeah. can't not get out of my car and do yeah. I'm not trying to say it like I'm a hero or anything like that. I'm just trying to say like that's what that's what I yeah. fucking do. Yeah. Um so when I see issues I think I have a unique perspective especially when it comes to something like Tarkov because mm -hmm. I understand some of the technical stuff. I did software for 10 years. Yeah. I'm also been really interested in game design for a very long time, so mm -hmm. I have a lot of perspective about game design and I'm a gamer. So I have a perspective that I think is useful for the developers, useful for community members useful for players of the game useful for the develop you know like the designers yeah. so i i feel like there's value in yeah, my opinion 100%. my opinion isn't necessarily always right sometimes it's subjective sometimes yeah. it's objective but well it's been right throughout the throughout the years even though people originally are gonna disagree with you it's like some people need to respect the fact that you were actually right years later but they'll never do that um because they don't want to be wrong i it's, <laughs> i i have been wrong a few mm. times Although I do feel good in that the number of times I eventually end up vindicated <laughs> makes me feel good yeah. when five years later after <laughs> being told how wrong I am about everything. Yeah. No one the people who told me I'm the people who told me I'm wrong, then so much time has gone by that they've forgotten that that's what I said, that then they'll come to me to tell me what I tried to convince them of years later is like <laughs> <laughs> You never tell them either. It's just like I had that idea years ago. No, like you, you just say, yeah, dude, wait, that's a phenomenal idea. You know, make them feel I'm better. I'm like, yeah, someone should make a video about yeah. someone came in and like, bro, you think blah, blah, blah. There's so many problems with the audio in this game. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm like, yeah, someone should make a video about the audio yeah. in the game. So uh, who would who would have done that? You know, who would have fucking done that? Uh, that's funny. Um, I did have to ask, outside of gaming, mean, um, would have been some of your favorite things to do to get away from the PC? You know, I'm, I'm sure hanging out with a wife is a big one. You know, uh, I'm sure that's a, a big one for you. You seem like a big family man. Uh, but yeah, we play, we play, we play board games. We play games. That's uh, sick. We play. There's a game called Dice Throne. Ooh. Like, like you know how like a king sits on a throne, not yeah. like throne, but yeah. Dice Throne. That's like 
it's kind of like a mixture of like Hearthstone meets like magic meets a board game. Oh, okay. And they have like, you can get like Marvel box sets and whatever, but they have their own universe. And, and yeah. me and my wife started playing that. And then a couple of her friend, like married couples from work and stuff that like we go that's and we play. Sick. And that's just been like a cool, yeah. she's not a gamer at all. Yeah. Like I wouldn't get her to play magic, but she loves playing like dice throw and so it's yeah. cool for us for us to like actually fucking socialize with other normal yeah. adults while that's also cool. like being able to use my brain play mm -hmm. a game that's you know yeah 100 percent. well do you like magic oh i love magic yeah dude we okay so a little what, what do we I don't know i don't know how long you play magic for if you know what oh, these are Oh, those are the og ones right i haven't i've been in magic for like three months but i love it that's oh, sick dog. Veritas, I, uh, I, I don't I've mean got, to do self-promotion or anything, but Discord, my Discord, we do Tuesday Night Magic Nights. Been yeah. a fucking blast, and we just recently, so they, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm going off on a tangent, but uh, Patty is working with a local game store of his to get a discount for our Magic Nights to where it, you would have free shipping for Magic stuff. That's Dude, so we sick. We fucking love Magic. I love it so much. I have... Do you play? you ever play Arena? I have, I have. That's how I learned for a little bit. So I have this deck box with my dinos in it. I have Gale's Cradle or Gaius Cradle over there, the fucking expensive card. Um, I've got like a dude. fucking carry box that has like all my <laughs> all my decks yeah. and everything. I, I I invested some money in. Uh, I only ever played. I only ever played standard. Oh, okay. Because I got it. I got into Magic like mm -hmm. five or six years ago, which was like thirty years after, like thirty years too late. Yeah. So I didn't want to play like modern or whatever because yeah. that involved eight, 80 billion years of cards that I yeah. don't have time to learn, history, whatever. So I always played like, I started playing during Shadows over Innistrad, which some people will understand. Mm -hmm. um, and I, and because at my, at that software startup, um, the social media startup, we used to do Friday drafts at lunchtime. Our boss would buy a a box and mm -hmm. we would do drafts so that's how i learned i learned by drafting Dude, that's sick. shadows or innistrad so you've never played commander i have played commander okay. i don't love commander yeah because i played with people who have been playing forever and they basically had <laughs> mm -hmm. decks where by turn three if you can't Yep. Stop this infinite combo. The game's over. Competitive commander Which is decks. like, oh, See, come for on. Our Tuesday nights, we <sighs> take le like, uh, th there's a level for decks and stuff. I'm sure you know, like one through 10. We take the levels and we also do like beginner pods and stuff like that. And we, uh, we, we want to just have fun. That's the thing about magic. I don't have fun in winning. I have fun in just being in the same call. Have you ever used spell table? You ever heard of spell table? No. Spell table is online magic where it has an integrated scan system. So you're essentially streaming your game with your camera, like you, the the webcam that I use uh, for the for what you're seeing on Discord. Um, I point that down at my board and yeah, I, my I, play I watched mat. one of those streams. I was lurking on yeah. one of those streams. Yeah, and it's been a blast. It's been it's been a blast. Uh, it allows you to also it has integrated scanning system, so you can click on a card with your mouse and it will scan the card and it will tell you what it does, so you can see Hell it. Hell yeah! It's so dope, and it's it's such a blast. I I love magic. I played in a magic tournament in Fort Worth. I got demolished, but it was the most fun I've ever had. So, um, bro, have you ever have you ever done D and D before? So I heard magic is the gateway drug to uh, D&D. And we are definitely wanting to try. I have a, a guy, I forget what they call him. What do they call the people that, Dungeon Master? Is that what they call? Yeah, so I have a friend in the community that's a Dungeon Master, Patty. Um, which he, he, oh he'll God, talk if you're, your if you're looking ear for off. Anybody, if you're looking for anybody, I'm, I'm totally down to get involved. Dude, we, no, we, we'll hit you I, up. I've played once. Yeah? I played once and it was great. One one of my community members was the DM yeah. and it was like me and a bunch of mods basically. I, I got to make one recommendation to you or anybody yeah. else. There's a podcast called The Adventure Zone. At, Patty the Patty knows that shit and he tells us about it all the time. That Brother, and, uh, I forget I, there's another. I hear the music. I listen to you got to go to the you got to start from the beginning. I cry every time and I've mm. listened to it from start to finish so many times. It, it's great because they start off. It's literally three brothers and their dad, and only like a couple of them have played before. So they start off like, we're gonna kill some gnolls in the cave, like real That's... basic. So you can follow through, and, and yeah. the end, bro, is like scripted. There's music, 
it's this epic incredible story that transcends there were just players handbook Dude. beginner one it, it becomes a story that literally will make you cry i promise it's beautiful okay fucking do it yeah no we, we'll hit you up if you want to play i the, the, john said in chat jesse veritas gino bellion dnd session that would be so fucking uh the fun sign me up bro, bro. That would be so much fun, but holy shit, I'd kill Vel. I'm just going to be honest with you. He smoked right off the bat. <laughs> I don't know how to play D&D that well, but I want to get into it. Magic has gotten my love for, like, imagination and shit. I love politicking in uh, Magic, like making alliances and, you know, fuck you, that's buddy. That's all D&D is. D&D yeah, is literally it, that's, that. Yes. That's why I want to get into it. Yeah, that's why That's why I want to get into it. Did you play um, Baldur's Gate? I did not. I could not Baldur's get into Gate it. Baldur's Gate 3? Oh, you! Oh man, I, I played it for like an hour. Yeah, couldn't get into it. Didn't touch it for a few months. I got back into it. That that should have I. It should have been in my top five list. I forgot. It should have been. Yeah, it was incredible. Yeah, watch my watch my fucking Starfield versus Baldur's Gate video. I saw it's like that. Two hour yep, I saw. I didn't watch the whole thing. I'll be honest with you. I was on my. I think I was on my way to the gym. I sometimes hop on a YouTube video and listen. I didn't listen to the whole thing, but I can promise you I, I did see that video. That, no. Starfield versus Balder... Well, Starfield, Bethesda. I played that for a little bit. Bethesda fucking being Bethesda. Baldur's Gate, I just... I don't know what it was. The turn-based combat <clears throat> just felt wonky doing on a computer. I think I could do it, like, IRL. You know, like, with a Baldur's Gate campaign. Or, not Baldur's Gate, but D&D campaign. It just felt wonky. I don't know what it was. And the controls were really hard to get used to, but... Um, I used one mod in Baldur's Gate, and it was a free cam mod. So, like, yeah. you run around and you use a camera. Like, like you could use, like, W... Oh, was, sorry, not free cam mod. It was WASD. So, you could yeah. run around with WASD in the mouse, like every oh. other game, as opposed to clicking. And that's really annoying, saying, go here, go here. Yeah. It was just a lot nicer to WASD around. It, it, it felt so much better. Okay. Um, just moving around the environment and then the combat is clunky until you do it a little bit yeah and then it's second nature and then I, you don't even realize that it's like yeah turn based the, yeah. the cinematics uh, saint is a big fan the guy in chat same visible he's a big big boulder gates 3 guy i just i couldn't get into it we played it for like an hour i probably should have refunded it but you know i might i might dibble dabble years down the line i'm in a wow right now it's like crazy bad like i'm addicted like and you play off stream? You don't play on stream? I can. I, on stream, it kills my stream. And I don't know what it is, but when my chat dies, I it's hard for me to be entertaining. And I just suck at it. So I only play off stream. I will watch a movie or watch a show while I'm yeah, playing yeah. WoW. And I mindlessly grind characters to 70 and then do end game stuff with them. And it's a blast. I love it. Um, but I wanted to move on. Um, with how busy I'm sure you are. What have you done the past years to help balance life and content creation? So, like, you are very, I'm sure you're very busy. Is there one thing that you have specifically done that has helped you balance life and content creation? Like, you know, being a good husband and being a good creator. Is, it, is there anything specifically that you do you think that's well? Um, I mean, the hardest thing for me for a while was ending my stream at a reasonable hour. Mm-hmm. You know, like I could go for 14, 15, 16 hours, right? But like ending at like six or seven before the wife goes to bed and falls asleep. Yep. Um I I I started to do that a lot more often years mm. ago. Uh and just being able to like guarantee some watch a movie, snuggle time, yeah. hang out for a few hours, 100%. you know, or even if it's forty five minutes, right? It's just so mm. much better than than uh yeah coming going to bed every night while you know when she's already asleep kind of thing it's just yeah. like not uh, yeah it sounds to me that you balance it pretty well nowadays or well learn to balance it that's that's a big key i mean honestly like i for a very long time i felt guilty not yeah. streaming for like 10 hours you know it, it's it's, and it's hard to stop mm -hmm. but i've always been jealous of deadly slob and that like i feel like he, he has like Family a much man. better Yep. schedule where he's like boom i'm going until six i'm done mm -hmm. and i've never had a schedule so yeah just being able to like guarantee mm. a, a default minimal amount of time 
as a minimum you yeah. know try to go more than that the better but uh but yeah that's i agree with you i i mean sure i i'm pretty bad at balancing it just because i don't necessarily i i mean i have a family clearly but I, i'm not in a relationship as of now you know it's definitely something that's gonna come oh, uh, ladies. yeah well i know no i dude i've been i've been at the point where i'm just so focused on the grind it's not even funny I can hardly deal with myself at the end of the day. I don't think I'm ready yeah. for a relationship just yet. So, well, then if you know, you're not, ladies then don't. wait. You know, ladies wait. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, I'm, no, yeah, that's funny. Wait that's... till our homeboys of legal age. Okay, he's still got a few more years. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, fuck right off. <laughs> Creators go through stuff every single day um, that they often don't show to their community. I'm sure you uh, you have your fair share of things that you often don't show. You know, there's uh, we touched on it earlier. Some people don't. Tell them, tell people how haters do hurt us sometimes. Um, one big thing though is imposter syndrome. I have to ask: Do you ever struggle with it? And if not, what do you think of create? Like, what do you think creators can do to help that sort of thing? Do you know what imposter syndrome is? Some people don't. Hundred, hundred percent. Okay. Yeah. So I, I've, I've actually felt less imposter syndrome as a content creator than I did as an engineer. Like I had a master's degree in computer really? science. Okay. I mean, the guy that sat next to me at the when I was in the robotics industry, he has code software running on one of the mars rovers today oh my god i'm like i don't belong here that's crazy. and yet i have like some awards that i dox myself if i showed you because it has yeah. my old job and my name yeah. but like awards is like software star like mm -hmm. i i never felt i never felt like i belonged with software but with yeah. content creation i i just i don't know i i've i've always been confident and proud of the work i put out mm -hmm. i don't think it's better than anyone else's or whatever but like i it's the best i can do yeah and that makes me happy mm -hmm. and that's all i need that's uh, fair okay so you're you're saying if somebody is going through imposter syndrome just be themselves and uh do the best that they can day in and day out and it'll eventually turn out right yeah do it do do what makes you happy mm -hmm. i think the Whatever you want to do, whether it's playing a game that might not be popular, it might not be Tarkov, it might not be whatever. Yeah. I, I think that being quote unquote less successful by doing something you enjoy, yeah, or that inspires you or that interests you, not only do I think that that will over time increase your chances of being properly successful, mm -hmm. um, but you'll be happier. Yep. Um, and when you if you do succeed you'll feel like you did it on your terms mm -hmm. I, if i'm gonna succeed i wanna i would much rather do things my way struggle for a while and then succeed having done things my way even though it wasn't the optimal way it wasn't the best way it wasn't the meta way it wasn't for the algorithm mm -hmm. I, I just i just would feel so much more pride doing it that way than yeah. following someone else's path no i feel i feel that and uh, that can help with a lot of people's imposter syndrome is just being themselves and not not necessarily looking at other, other people as i think one thing that uh, a lot of streamers struggle with including myself is comparing themselves to other people i think that can cause a lot of imposter syndrome you know why does this person have this many subs or this many followers compared to you know me right like i do the same exact per thing as this person i feel like that's uh something that a lot of people struggle with I, I haven't compared myself, you know, to anybody or yeah, to anybody in the past few years, right? Like I compare myself to myself yesterday. You know, some days I'll be on a decline and some days I'll be on a uh, incline. So it's just it all depends. Look at, look at it this way: tomorrow, if you were doing a three PC giveaway mm -hmm. and you did exactly what you were doing today, you'd have three times the viewers. Would you feel any better about yourself? No, probably. I mean, maybe. So. It depends, right? Like, it depends. Oh, okay, well, then the next day you don't do the PC giveaway and then you're back down to a third. Yeah, that feels shitty. Why, why were the were those people yeah. there for the content? Did I earn that? No, they wanted free shit, right? Yeah. So that's why the whole drops thing can get kind of toxic. That's why people yeah. who farm giveaway stuff is, it's not necessarily bad. It's cool to be able to give back. Yeah. But there's a million things that people do that are not easy not shortcuts not like life hacks whatever you want to call them but there's mm -hmm. there's a million ways to make that number the viewer number with the little person to make yep. that number go up and in my opinion only a few of those ways feel good yep outside of the implicit number go up i feel good thing mm -hmm. 
you know and now i'm to the point where i get i get at least one person a day that goes what happened to veritas like their first message in chat first time messenger mm -hmm. what happened to veritas don't play tarkov anymore you fell off yeah and then they say i was a big fan and it's like bro you're a first time chatter and you've been following for 46 seconds no usually uh, you know? they've, they're not following <laughs> So I get what you're saying. Yeah, 100%. So it's like, and the best, the best irony there. I would never, ever, ever talk shit to anybody who's an up and coming content creator. Yeah. Would never talk shit about numbers. Oh, you've got this many viewers. But when you have TTV in your Twitch name and you're talking about my viewership, I click on your name and you have 11 followers. That's where it's like, I mean, even if I did fall off, you were never on. <laughs> So, yeah, so no, why, you... why do you feel, how do you, and that's not me trying to make them feel bad. It's me wondering, how could you say that with a no, straight face and not no, be embarrassed? I, I get what you're saying. It's kind of like um, on TikTok the other day, somebody came to me and I said, I said to them how, I was talking about how fake and toxic uh, online gaming is. And they were like, you can't say that when you are a content creator on said toxic game. It's like, you're not going to ask a trash man how to do the plumbing. You're not going to, like, he was uh, basically essentially saying that I don't have the right to say how toxic and fake gaming is because I'm a gamer. It's like, you're not going to ask your fucking Tommy down the street that is a is a professional plumber how to, how to code a damn video game, right? Like, you're going to ask the source, right? And so it just... I don't know. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Um, how the people, too many people live vicariously through yeah. like these people watch so much. I, I'm not not picking on him in particular, but like Landmark, yeah. they watch so much Landmark that anybody that that they they look at other people who aren't Landmark in mm -hmm. terms of numbers, and they're like, you're you're nothing, and it's like they're forgetting they're not Landmark, <laughs> right? They live vicariously through these content creators, mm -hmm. and. It has gives them this weird fucking perspective on yeah. what success no, what, is. One, what one hundred percent, and then and people also will look at the same same extent. Like you as a Tarkov player, you know, if you don't have sixty percent survival rate, you're a shit player. You know, if you don't have cap already, you with, you know how many times on a daily I get asked, "Is this your first account?" You know, and I I'm like, low, I'm level forty five. You know, and uh, is this your is this your only account? Is this your alternate? It's like, brother, I play the game. I played the game for seven years. I don't want to fucking do the same task that I did seven years ago. I'm sorry. And he's like, well, understandable, but this is your job. Shouldn't you be good at it? It's like, when are you going to realize that being a good streamer doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be a good player? You know? Bro, you want to you wanna know the irony? The, the painful irony mm -hmm. of this is I remember for a while, there was one particular content creator that was getting decently popular at this whatever i don't remember when it was this particular point in time um and people a number of people were regularly saying why don't you have a lot of money or your stats are bad right like look at this other person mm -hmm. they they aren't struggling they aren't having the problem that you are and i remember actually asking i'm like how so what are you doing what is it right yeah and the implication originally was basically that I'm just not as good at Tarkov as them. I'm bad at combat. I'm not, you know, fast enough, quick enough, smart enough, mm -hmm. whatever. And their answer to how they did it was they find the deadest server and avoid all PvP while farming. So they, they, they explicitly said like, oh, I'm rich because I, I do everything I can to not engage yeah. in combat where i would be on auto servers and i'd be playing at 6 p.m <laughs> they would be playing on west coast server at 6 a.m east yep. coast time yep. so they could just run through interchange for six hours they get in six fights <laughs> and otherwise that would be the extent of it they just find gpus you know when i'm playing and i get in six fights every raid yeah. during prime time hours <laughs> and there's this whether it's conscious or purposeful mm -hmm. This whole idea of like, they're not saying that's what they're doing. They're not like lying to their viewers, but at the same time, they're giving off the impression that like, you look how much money I have got. I'm so fucking good. When really it's like, 
I'm kind of going on easy mode a yeah. little bit here. And that's why. So you got someone saying, oh, I, I'm successful because I'm playing on easy mode. And other people are saying, bro, they play on hard mode and they're doing better than you. And it's like, OK, man, <laughs> I'm not going to call anybody out. I'm not going to throw them under the bus. But like, yeah. No, I, I get what you're saying, and uh, there are some people, and, you know, some of my best friends do this. They cheese certain quests to get capo faster. It's like, oh, I, you know what? I've always said, and I, I'm not going to say any names, but it, it it literally makes me laugh every single time, a week after wipe, when everybody is rushed kappa, and those, those people that rush kappa say that Tarkov is lacks content is stale and is it, dude they need more quests or like they, the game is the same as before it's like brother you just rushed a normal player's six months of content in a week and you're wondering why this shit's rushed you know what yeah. i'm saying like if you want to rush kappa by all means you, like you're sick as hell for that but don't bitch just and know complain. What you're, just know what you're doing. Yeah, just just don't bitch and complain that the game is stale all of a sudden. It's because you fucking... You, you just rushed all these quests, man. You know, it's just, listen, it doesn't make any sense. But me sense. and you are out of touch. We're out of touch. Yeah. Right? When I say there's problems with the recoil of the stamina, mm -hmm. it's a skill issue, and I'm out of touch with the player base mm -hmm. and all the guys that got mm -hmm. Kappa because they three, yeah. four-man squatted with meta gear <laughs> that they were half given by their communities on dead servers uh have higher survival rates and more money yeah and they're complaining about other things that i'm complaining about clearly we're the yeah. ones that are out of no, touch no yeah their takes are the the same we could make the same exact tape or tape <laughs> take we should we could make the same exact take okay I could say it as a mediocre player, level 45, and somebody else, level 60 Kappa Gamer. Who's going to be listened to more? Not me. It's, it, my take isn't as significant as theirs because I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. It's like, brother, you're, you, it's completely lopsided. The entire saying, co entire community is kind of like that, unfortunately. Um, it sucks. It sucks for somebody like myself that just wants to play the game and have fun and talk to chat. But, you know, how are you going to yeah, do well, it? Well, truth isn't democratic. Uh, it's it's a it's not a popularity. I mean, it is in pr in practice. It's a popularity contest, mm. but it shouldn't be. Yeah. And honestly, sometimes if I come to a conclusion. That's different mm. than what the majority of people are saying, and I feel like I came to that conclusion. Uh, in a in, in a in a in the proper way, in a good way, in a fair, reasonable, responsible way. And most people I hear disagree. I, mm. That's that's a hint to me that I'm on to something. Yep. That's not a hint to me that maybe I need to change my mind to be the same as everyone else's. Mm -hmm. No, I agree with it 100%. The, some of the most controversial takes I'm sure you have had in the past, you were right about. You know, we we, dis we discussed this earlier, right? You, you said a lot of things about the Tarkov community and eventually you were correct, you know, and it's just... I wish people listened. That's that's all it is. Um, moving on, though, uh, I know people, like, if people ask me what's one thing I struggle with in life, um, that's it, for me, it's my personal life. It's incredibly hard to balance. Uh, do you balance it well? And if so, what do you do to balance it? So you mentioned earlier how you, you have a specific stream time where you get off earlier. Um, but as, in regards to life and family, you know, what's what's something that you do to, to balance things? Uh, honestly, not enough. Um, having all this content creation grind and everything happening at the same time that the pandemic happened, mm -hmm. where we were all locked down, that like threw a wrench, I feel like, in sort of the flow of life. Yep. You know, going from working a normal job mm -hmm. to then basically over the course of like two years, not working a normal job and being forced to stay inside and grind this toxic, antisocial, weird yep. lifestyle, it it turned everything kind of on its head. And I'll, mm. I'll admit, I'm still trying to figure out like how to how to live a normal life again. <laughs> um, you you know, a lot are. of people struggle with that just with the pandemic, mm -hmm. you know, coming off of changing their whole lifestyle. But it was like two things at once combined to. It's complicated. Yeah, man. no, it's, it's hard. That's why I like like asking creators how they balance their life, and you you don't know how many people have at, answered the same exact way. 
they they don't know that much either. They're still learning, right? And that's that's the beautiful thing about life is that we're all learning. You know, and I think that's why I'm so sympathetic and empathetic sometimes is that we realize that the people that, going back to our conversation earlier, the negative people, they're still learning with life too. And I've realized that. It's just, it doesn't, it doesn't make me feel any better to think that way, you know, but it, it's the truth, right? It's it's the honest truth. Um, I wanted to ask, um, I know uh, for sure every creator in their lifetime uh, has been burnt out in the content creation field. You mentioned burnout earlier. Is burnout something that you deal with? You deal with a lot of burnout? Um, I don't know. I guess it kind of depends. Different people mean different things when it mm -hmm. comes to burnout. Yeah. Um, I, I, I didn't, I don't know if I would say that I got burnt out on Tarkov or if it just fizzled out. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's no, maybe that's a distinction without a difference or maybe it's the same thing. I don't know. But like, I just got bored yeah. and I wasn't inspired. I feel like I did everything. I talked about all the issues. I made a video essay about every major problem, about all of the solutions. I did all the testing. I did all the things and I was just no longer creatively inspired mm -hmm. and i'm like mega adhd and i'll and which means that i get bored easily and mm -hmm. i procrastinate on things that i should be doing <laughs> um yeah and so if i'm not inspired i'm not motivated and if i'm not motivated then i won't do anything mm -hmm. i won't get out of bed i think you explained like a lot of people there including yeah. myself there are some things where I'm not motivated one day and it's like, it's the end of the world <laughs> in my brain, right? Like I'm not motivated. I don't want to. So Wednesdays are my out day. I make an entire plan of the day. Um, my therapist has mentioned to put simple things on there to for like temporary, you know, serotonin from getting done a task. Like get breakfast or go wash your car, you know, something like that. Put it on there and, and do it, right? And I'll do that. And it gets to midday where I completed all these tasks and I still have of the half the list to go and I get so unmotivated. I go and sit on the couch and I'm doomed. Like I literally can't get back up. I go to the gym. I try to motivate myself again. Um, and then I'm I'm doomed even more. Right. I don't I'm tired now. You know, I'm exhausted from the gym. <laughs> You I know? got a recommendation for yeah. a video, actually. Okay. Um, let me get the name of it. Yeah, you're all um, good. You're all good. It, do you ever listen to Healthy Gamer? I have not. Oh, dude, Dr. K? You don't know Dr. K? No. Oh my god, bro. Bro, so, am I um, out of touch here? He's uh he's a he streams on Twitch and he's a YouTuber. He's like this older Indian guy, but like he plays WoW, <laughs> yeah. like he's he's oh, like shit. super in touch, but he's, you know, he's like not what you would picture as like the guy that would have that would be in touch, right? Like a 50-year-old yeah. Indian dude. But he's a I think he's a psych psychologist or psychiatrist i don't know yeah. one of the two I, I, I always forget the distinction That's um sick. but there's a video that he did um called the secret behind resisting dopamine it's like 28 minutes long mm -hmm. and he talks about uh so many really interesting things okay. can i paste the youtube link in your chat yeah or is for that, sure uh, for sure no I, no no it I'll, won't tag you it won't um yeah for I sure check out that video I would recommend okay. you check it out. Okay. It might have some interesting perspective. Mm -hmm. These videos, they never like solve anything, but they give me little tidbits. And this yeah. one might have a, a little bit that you can. No, I'm uh, definitely going to watch on. that. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I would I would check it out. Uh, he makes fantastic content. OK, and, and going back to the whole like dopamine stuff, you said resisting dopamine, right? Like uh, what makes you feel good? I think one thing that has ruined a lot of people nowadays, and this is a hot take, I think social media and especially TikTok has given us, to, and I, I said this the other day, it got some flack. I think TikTok gives us temporary ADHD. It is ruined. Oh, that that's not a hot take, dog. That's, that's like, just a fact, my man. I know, but people don't believe in that because they want to, oh, I fucking love TikTok, though. I don't have well, ADHD. Because they're 17. You know? Yeah. Like, no, no adult is going to, you're going to have... So here's the yeah. thing. You, you sound like when you say that every out of touch mm. boomer saying all the kids just listen to rock music. That's mm. the problem these days, right? The difference is, is that rock music wasn't a problem, mm. but social media and short form content and people growing up living in it 
living in it, mm-hmm. living in it, I actually think is going to be a problem in an, in an unironically, unironically, I'm saying kids these days, and I do actually think I'm not just being a kids these days. May, uh, maybe in 20 years, I'll figure out I was wrong. Maybe yeah. I'm out of touch, but I, I, I do think, I do think there's a, there's a problem. Yeah. Um, and if you haven't, here's another thing I'm going to recommend. If you haven't listened to Bo Burnham, uh, you ever listen to Bo Burnham? Yeah, I've heard a few of his songs. So, A, you should check out his Inside, like Netflix special. That was basically, it was like him on Wait. Netflix having like a mental breakdown during yeah. the pandemic locked inside. And it's, as a content creator, bro, you're going to be like, fuck. There's a scene from that that I think only some people will get, okay, where he literally is like, it's all like comedy and satire, yeah. but in a, this dark, real way where he's basically thanking people for like watching and subbing, looking in the camera, holding a knife, saying like, thank you. Yeah. And it's like. If you just think about what that represents from mm. the context of not just the consumer, but as a producer, you'll have a different perspective where it's like, fuck. Yeah. Like, watch it. Just okay. think about it, dude. Okay. It's a, it's, okay. it's a mind fuck. He, and he has, and he has, um, he, so- he was on some talk show where he talks yeah. about that content and how it's fucking us up. Mm-hmm. He's like on a panel of like three or four people. I think he's just like sitting on a bench. I can't yeah. find the clip right now, but it's it's insightful to like a scary degree how okay. smart he is on this. Did he do a so? Does he he does co- comedy stand up right? Stand up comedy. Yeah, I mean, it used to just be it, it used to just be like memes, and then he, he and then he grew up. Doesn't like, he have a few songs too? Like he the, made, well, that's what he did. He yeah. it's, it's all singing songs and they used to be like edgy like if he did half of the songs he'd be canceled now yeah but like yeah so i i found the clip okay. uh bo burnham colonizing our minds okay. in the age of social media it's a three minute clip and okay. it's like scary how insightful yeah it is it's super powerful okay. um, he's a he's a smart dude yeah We'll, we'll 100%. I'll, I'll literally send you a DM after stream telling you how I feel about it. We'll, we'll watch it on the way to the gym. That's, there are so many people out there that know what the fuck they're talking about and nobody wants to listen. Do you know you know what I'm saying? Like, there are so and, many... And you know, also, but you know what's even worse? What? You know what's even worse? That there are people who hear the message and they're like, ah, I get it, man. I feel you preach. And they only really kind of have to. Yeah. That's the sad <laughs> yeah. thing. It's like, no, you actually don't. Yeah. You, I, I, and I know I feel like the guy who's like, oh, the movie was good, but you should really read the book. Yeah. I feel like that. But it's like, you get it and you appreciate it, but you actually, you mm. actually don't. Yep. No, I agree 100%. And that's not me trying to gatekeep or anything mm. or like gaslight. It's me saying like, oh, I wish you had the perspective to really mm. get the extra layer of it that and i feel like his content is like that yeah okay well we'll we'll check out the videos i'll I'll check out check check about it after stream and uh we'll watch that um i did want to ask uh what are some things for you as a streamer or creator that has helped you with life outside the computer for me it's patience with people um being more patient you know allowing somebody to talk to me in a way and i'll understand what they're saying it but i won't I don't know. For me, it's patience. I have a lot more patience with other people, especially IRL, my friends, you know, messing with me and stuff. What is something that uh, has helped you in your life as a creator? I do. I do everything I can in IRL Mm -hmm. to try to like, you know how like when someone goes out of their way to do something nice for a stranger, like that kind Mm -hmm. of thing. Yeah. It it sounds douchey to say that you do that cuz it's like disingenuous but I I'm not I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. I'm trying to answer your question in that. Yeah. Be, because I don't get out as much as I should. So if it's like the the two times I'm going to leave the fucking house and go to Starbucks or whatever it is, try to pay for the person's thing behind me, Kindness. you know, the, what you know, like whatever. Yeah. That 
makes me feel human and makes mm -hmm. me remember that it's not just about being fucking depressed, yeah. dealing with all these shitty things online, that it's like, it makes me feel human and like I did something real and good. Yeah. So I try to do that all the time, whether it's drive someone to the airport if they need, you know, like whatever, right? Doing good things for real people mm -hmm. actually helps me with all the other stuff because yep. it just puts everything into perspective. Dude, I'm I'm reading a book right now. It's called literally The Keys to Kindness. And it's it goes on and it explains, it goes through studies of people being more kind and like people doing nice things for each other. You know, they had a specific group to where they it was a bunch of college students and they told us one group to um, do one thing during the week that to like do something kind for somebody else. And then they took another group and they tracked both the like both groups like emotions and and uh, you know sadness or happiness and whatever. And the group that was more kind was twenty eight percent or twenty eight times more happy than the uh, the group that didn't do anything kind. I I really um, my mindset changed about a year ago when I found out. And this is an actual study, so you guys can look this up. Um, I believe it was literally, it was it was from a uh, college in the UK. There has been studies that negative thinking is a a direct, um, a direct, not indicator, but you are more likely, if you are a negative thinker, you are more likely to get Alzheimer's disease than somebody that is a positive thinker. And that really changed my mindset. There's an actual study on it that majority of the people that have um, unfortunately gotten something like Alzheimer's disease ha have been more negative in their lifetime than the people with that were did not have. Now, clearly, there's there's you know discussions to be had, right? Like, why is this a correlation? But it really changed my mindset. It didn't instantly make me think positive, but it it, it made me be a lot more um understanding of myself right and it it allowed me to stop living in the negative mindset that i lived in right there's there's studies out there that literally show you why being positive and being kind to other people literally change your life and make you a happier person but a better person and they help you with your goals and more motivation it's it's such a it's such a cool thing um it's so true and at the same time though it's so depressing yeah and these types of things make me at the same time make me a lot more cynical mm -hmm. but let me let me just pose a question to you yeah imagine or i guess i'm more of a hypothetical imagine what humanity what kids what kids these days would be yeah. like if the algorithms weren't based on engagement but instead they were based on if they could quantify whatever it is that's in the I have restored faith in humanity shorts yeah. where it's like there's a drowning monkey in the river and the guy on the rowboat helps the monkey yep. to the if if that if that right there whatever quantify the essence of those videos yeah. saving the puppy you know helping a, a an elephant you know little baby elephant and then the mother elephant gives you a little hug with yeah. the, you know if that is what drove the success of content yeah. rather than the engagement that comes from the negativity imagine what the world would be like yep. right i'm on a i'm on a tiktok yeah, i'm on a tiktok algorithm right now called hope core i repost them all the time hope core is beautiful it's literally just like segments of videos of like there was one it was um it was a hope core video of a guy he fully grown man like 25 years old goes up to an old police officer and shakes his hand and the police officer's like what well, would you know how's it going sir like how are you and he's like do you remember like the 25 year old man's like do you remember I think me i've seen this and the cop is like no i don't think i do sir uh do i know you and he was like yeah you when i was two years old you saved me from drowning and i've seen I, this yeah. i have been able to have kids and live a healthy life because of you and they just gave each other hugs for the next three minutes and they're crying Bro, i legit i, I don't like, know about you but i watch that shit and i cry i cry too dude it makes Insta me feel Insta human cry. if i cry if i don't cry oh, yeah. at something like that i feel like i'm a dickhead you know like i'm, I don't, I'm I, numb. I unashamedly i don't feel you know? bad that like yeah that like you say, if you say that to an 800 viewer stream yeah. there'll be all these people that'll laugh at you and call you cringeworthy i don't give a fuck dude yeah. i 
I cry. There's like four or five tropes in like movies, especially yeah. that I'll cry, dude. Yep. Uh, like anytime a father and hugs a son and says he's proud, boom, dude. I'm done. I'm done, Zo. Dude, you know? yep. Um, anytime like an underdog or someone in trouble gets like saved, yeah, I, I'm done, Zo. Right? <laughs> like, like there's just exactly a few different things what like you're that. Saying. And generosity yeah. does it for me, right? Like, I think the yep. one one video that really makes me cry, like bawling my eyes out, is if um, I don't know for whatever reason they were auctioning off a uh, dead sheriff's car for whatever, like his police officer car, and the son was trying to bid on it, like in an auction. Don't know why they were auctioning off a uh, sheriff's car, but they were. And the son could only go to forty thousand dollars, right, to buy his father's. Like he wanted it in remembrance, right. And the the other guy that was like competing in the auction with him drove it up to sixty thousand, and the son couldn't go anymore. And he, you could tell that the son was super sad. You know, he was sad that he was um not being able to buy his his son's car. And then the guy that bought it got the fucking car, like for sixty grand, twenty more than the the son could spend. Because there was another guy that wanted it, and he gave the keys to the son, and they just hugged it. Bro, it makes me cry every time. I'm sure somebody knows what I'm talking about in chat, but I love, man. I love that shit so much more, because here's the thing. Yeah. That guy didn't plan that, and I'm assuming it wasn't his fucking cameraman that was there. Yeah. It wasn't a social media thing for... Yeah the sake of it as long as it feels genuine right that's the shit man yeah. that's the shit unfortunately yes. so much of it is just disingenuous and it's just there to farm stuff but man mm. that shit yeah no it's oh it's dude, so it's so good i'm on that hope core right now man i love it every single day i try and repost something positive you know and it's like simple it's just like a bunch of those clips put into like 20 or 10 to 20 seconds and then played back to back for like two minutes and it's just like you'll cry at them it's dude that's the kind of content oh that like God. i wouldn't i i like one percent of the content i'm as i'm scrolling every now and then on yeah. like youtube shorts because i don't really spend much i don't i don't have a tiktok or anything yeah. um is like that but if i were to spend an hour scrolling through that it'd be way better than just like random fucking yep. tarkov clips or yep. whatever like well, that's, you that's ever the get... shit that if you ever get a TikTok, let me know. I'll send you a bunch of them so you'll get on the algorithm and it just be a bunch of hope core TikToks. Let me know. Let me know. I yeah, got you. Then I'll, I'll stream a third less because I'll be spending all my time <laughs> in my fields Dude, in bed. No, yeah, no, it's I. And maybe that's what I need. I <laughs> no, it's it's definitely not what you need because I I sometimes skip stream or not skip. I'm sometimes late because I'm in my bed crying. My therapist recommended. I literally told her this issue. I get, I'm very, we talked about it, empathetic and sympathetic. And um, I can't, I don't get on social media two hours after I wake up. I literally set a timer. I can't hop on social media. If I do, I'm like mad at myself because it literally ruin like it ruins my mood. Like whatever I start my day with is what the day usually entails. So if I start off my day with, you know, hope core crying, I'm going to be an emotional person on stream. And I'm, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but I don't use social media two hours after I wake up. It's it's literally instilled in my brain. I don't do it. I hardly message friends, you know, as bad as that sounds. You know, it's just... You're you're talking about what, what Dr. K is talking about really? in, that, in that video. Uh, yeah, being like being productive early yeah. in the day, may, like improves your mental health later mm. on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Well, I can't wait to watch those videos after stream. Um, before we get into the last deep question, though, I wanted to ask about music and how talented you are. Uh, you created a copyright-free playlist for streamers, and it's it's really good. Like, really, really good. Um, how did that come about, and how has music changed your life? Um, I mean, I... The most, like, copyright-free... Now, to be clear, it's not, it's not copyright-free. It's not, okay. It's DMCA-free. DMCA-free, okay. I own the copyright to my music. I get paid for my music. Yeah. So, uh, but like I'm DMCA is something that like you have to actively do. So like I would yeah. have to go DMCA claim someone, yeah. which I won't do. Um, yeah. Okay. So it's not copy. I'm, yeah, I'm being legally, yeah. I'm legally pedantic. Okay. Because if someone goes and they take my music and they put it in their YouTube videos, the algorithm will automatically content ID their stuff and I'll get mm -hmm. paid for it. 
Yeah. So that sucks for them. And I can't guarantee I'll answer their email to whitelist their video. <laughs> yeah. So it's for their own protection, right? Yeah. I don't give a fuck. I'll get the money and it's all automated and I'll never know it. Um, but if you stream or whatever, you can stream with the music. I'm not, it won't get muted and you know, awesome. I'm not going to copyright claim or whatever. Yeah. Uh, it started because most copyright free music sucks. It does. And yeah, it does. and I don't want to use the same music that like everyone else uses. So mm -hmm. I was like, I'm just going to make my own. And then people liked it. So I made more <laughs> and people liked it. And I have like 120 songs or something now. Mm -hmm. And it's mostly just so that I could have whatever vibe I want in whatever I'm working on, I can have. Well, I can speak for a lot of people. We appreciate it. We really do. Uh, you know, you don't know how many streamers have go through the the struggles of listening to music on stream nowadays. You know, I have dual track audio, but if I if that ever goes down, I'm fucked. I'm just I'm being yeah. real, and I'm glad that we have somebody like yourself that you know does good for humanity because everybody's in for the money nowadays. It seems so. We appreciate people like that. Uh, or pre appreciate people like yourself. Um, now, one last deep question. Uh, what do you wish you changed sooner in your life, whether it be as a creator, a person, you know, a son, etc.? What do you wish you, you did sooner? It's a deep Damn. question. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is something that obviously, like, it's a hypothetical. Uh, one of the, one of, I guess one of the, 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 the only thing that really stands out to me that... Mm -hmm is unfortunate I, I can't say i regret it because i don't blame myself but so my mom passed away when i was 11. Mm. um she had als lou gehrig's disease and i wish i had been like just to sit down and have a conversation with her mm. about like who are you as a person mm -hmm. what do you like to do like, as an 11 year old you're not wondering you, you don't you don't know what your yeah. mom enjoys what what do you believe in what are you yeah. passionate about right like so there's just there's just a lot of that that i don't have mm -hmm. and uh that's it's sad it's yeah. just unfortunate i just wish i i wish i had the perspective mm -hmm. to have known that i should have just talked to her yeah more and well, asked more questions you know yeah. but i was fucking 11 so yeah i'm about to say you're 11 years old you know you don't really and uh, there's a deep hitting quote, and it's it's kind of like what you touched on, right? It's like you don't realize your parents are getting older with you. You know, you're living your life, and you don't realize that your parents are going old too. You know, and it's their first life. We look at parents as a sense of like they've lived another life or they've done things before. It's like no, this is their only life as well. And I just, I, I hope you don't beat yourself up over it too much. You were 11, so you know. Uh, but I don't. I feel no guilt. Yeah. And there's no regret, really. It's mm -hmm. just, it's just, you know, something I wish, wish yeah. I could have, I, I wish would have happened, could have happened. Yeah. Um, but I also don't dwell on those kinds of things because, like, mm -hmm. literally, I have one. Uh, you ever seen the butterfly effect? I have one different conversation, and I'm not doing this right now with my wife. You know, whatever. So yeah, I'm happy with where I am now, and because of that, I can't, I can't say I would want to change anything else because then yep. none of this would happen. Yep. No, I agree with that. There, and that's like everything in life is that you, what, some of the things that we have nowadays is the result of something that we lost, if that makes any sense, right? So, for example, um, uh, at least for myself, right? A, a good example of this is the reason that I feel as though I have done so well on Twitch and content creation is because of COVID. As COVID was COVID was bad for a lot of people, but it allowed people to stay at home and watch my stream and allow me to make a livelihood out of it, you know? Yeah, and it was other people's loss that kind of allowed me to gain in a sense. And I don't ever, I will never say that COVID was a good thing, right? But if we're talking career-wise, it helped my career become what it is today, you know? And I feel yeah, there's like... there's no shame in recognizing, yeah. like, things happen the way that... You you could say anything, right? If World War II didn't happen, you know, then I wouldn't have been born. Yep. That's not the same as saying you're glad World War II happened. You know yeah, what I mean? exactly. Like, let's just be real. No. Things happened the way that they happened. And because of, you know, the series of events, we are where we are. And yeah. it's it's kind of like what I said earlier, you know, it's uh, it's not about the uh, it's not about the destination. It's about the journey. And it doesn't matter how you got how you got somewhere. It's a ma it's a matter how 
how well you got there, if that makes sense, you know, or how you got there, what path you took, you know, and you, sometimes you have to find, um, sometimes you have to find a different path, you know, I think that's something that a lot of people don't do nowadays, is that they think they have to stay on the same path forever, you know, I've always told my stream, there, there could be a day where I just, I quit streaming, you know, is it realistic? No, but there could be a day that I feel as though it's not my time anymore to be a streamer, and I go I mean, on that the bigger. Will come yeah, for exactly. Um, and that goes for everybody in everything, right? Office jobs, or you know, it, it's just it's it's hard. But uh, it's definitely and what you gotta what you gotta ask yourself mm -hmm. at the end of the day is: Are you proud of yourself? Mm -hmm. And if the answer is yes, nothing else matters. Yep, I'm glad that you brought that up. I usually ask creators: um, If they died today, what would they want people to remember them for? And would you be proud of yourself? And so many people don't necessarily know how to answer that. You know, so many people are like, I don't know if I'd be proud of myself, you know? And I don't know what I'd do. I don't know what I would do if I was known as a bad person, right? Like, I always... Well, but I here's the thing. There's yeah. a difference, though. Because if I died tomorrow, I would be known to a... a a noteworthy percentage. I can't tell you if it's 1%, 50%. Mm -hmm. To a noteworthy percentage as a bad person. It sucks. But the fact of the matter is... I would have said that that sucks... Maybe a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. But I understand that that is... That is largely made up of unfair misconceptions... Mm -hmm. about a couple of reasonable uh, plus a few reasonable mistakes that any human being would make about having a bad day or whatever mixed in with a whole bunch of terrible um internet circle jerk mm. shit combined yeah. in there but i'm proud of myself and i know that i care about people i want to help people i'm a good person you are the same and i know that so you should feel that mm. so we're full circle back to the it doesn't matter what people think mm. but not because you don't care about what people think yeah because you can't you can't change what people think what everyone thinks of you mm. all that matters is that the people that matter and that care and that are reasonable and that are fair so There's it a, doesn't matter there, not no because i get what you're saying they don't matter there's a there I I I live my life by quotes. I'm sure you've seen multiple times this podcast. I I live my life based on quotes and like what I've thought, you know. And there's a there's a quote that you're trying to say. It's uh uh the people that that mind don't matter and the people that matter don't mind. And it's the truth, right? Like the people yep. that care don't mind what you do and the people that don't it, you get what I'm saying, right? And yep. and Another quote I think um, should be said is, you know, a lot of people are like, you know, if I'm a bad person or whatever, you said, may, what is it, 80% or 2% in their story, am I a bad person? I heard a quote a few weeks ago, it kind of just like fucked me up mentally a little bit. You know, you have to be the, you have to be the villain in someone's story to be the hero in your own. I know that, it, I know it's like on straight up, like face to face value, it's like, you don't want to fucking be a villain. But if you think about it, it's like you... There are some people that you have to be the villain in their story to be the hero in your own, right? Whether it be re leave a relationship that y it was toxic. Or whether it be you can't be friends with somebody because their their ideas don't align with yours. Those people are going to look at you as a villain. They're going to hate you or they're going to think negatively of you. But you needed to do that in order to be the your own hero. Does that make sense? Yep. And so yeah. I feel like that's a it's a big quote that you kind of kind of touched on, you know. So it's 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 important, right? And um, there's a lot of things that people would change sooner in life, uh, but uh, you can't always get around to it, you know. And uh, I just hope people live day to day as best as they can, you know. Um, and in the podcast, though, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Veritas, we are going to do what I like to call speed questions. Um, we are going to get to chat questions. So, chat, if you guys have any questions for Mr. Veritas or oh, myself, 
Um, feel free to ask in chat. I'm going to take a log of them, and you guys can ask whatever you guys want. Um, before, before we do that, I'm going to do speed questions. Uh, answer this as fast as you, po as you want. If you don't want to answer it fast, by all means. Favorite place to visit? Sedona, Arizona, with my mm. wife. Okay. Any any specific reason? It's, it's just fucking. It's just beautiful, fucking beautiful place, dude. Okay. Okay. Best season, like winter, fall. Okay. The older I get, the more I appreciate fall. <laughs> in New England, I'm the same specifically. Way. Fall is beautiful in England. I've heard beautiful, like yeah. trees and stuff, and it's a beautiful place. Yeah. Um, cat person or dog person? Both. Why don't I? I don't. I shouldn't have to choose that. If I, you had to I, choose, I've never. Oh God! I mean, if I have to choose, fuck, mm. dude. I, I, I have a cat, and I love my cat. Okay. So I have to. If I say dog person, then I'm like, I'm like killing my cat virtually, <laughs> right? But they can't hear but us. No worries. But I do have to say, um, when I, uh, me and my wife were working on building a custom house, mm -hmm. um, having more space, uh, I want a dog, and I'm very much looking forward to. The relationship you have with a dog, yeah, is a different kind of relationship than when you have with a cat. I agree, uh, and I'm looking forward to to having that okay that relationship. Well, you but, would say uh, both if you could, correct? Yeah, you'd say, but okay, and and I can. Yeah, yeah, you. I mean, <laughs> so you I, can. So I, I mean, you can. It, it, it's literally there's no there's no law here saying you can't. Uh, music or podcast, or podcast. both. Okay, podcast. I like podcasts. Any any favorites you have? Uh, the Skeptic's Guide to the Universe literally changed my life, and it's okay. who I, it's it's why I am who I am. I, really? I, I, I told that story recently. Yeah, it's why I okay. am who I am. Okay. Uh, Twitter or Instagram? Twitter. Twitter? Okay. Mountains or beach? Ugh, that just made me sick to my stomach. I just said Twitter. Uh, mountains? Yeah, mountains. Okay. Well, that's the last of the speed questions. I appreciate you. Um, Veritas, this is the outro. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. Uh, this is actually right online with Mr. Pesilis. We went for like three hours and 40 minutes too. Um, but one one time again, I want to ask, where where can we find you again? Platforms, whatever it may be. Uh, uh, YouTube, I have, a, a if you search Veritas Music, that's my third channel. Okay. I have another one called Satire V, which is Veritas Backwards, okay. where I have a bunch of content. This is the some of the best content I've ever made with like 300 views. <laughs> it's about speed running and about okay. chess and a whole bunch of other stuff on my second channel. My main channel is, uh, you know, just search for Veritas okay. Parkov or whatever. You'll find it uh, on Twitch as Veritas. Okay. There you go. Okay. Well, that I mean, that works for me. Um, I don't know if we have any questions. Let's see if uh, people want to cook here. Um, I Yeah, I do know B said that uh, does anyone have that video he linked? I think that you're getting it. I just linked both Thank of those. Thank you for that. Not really a question, but tell this bearded beauty to hit me up so I can roast him up some coffee. That's my coffee guy. He he gets blends from all over the world. I'm trying a Colombian blend right now. Um, but he does Papua New Guinea, Yemen, uh, Hawaiian, or I don't know if he does Hawaiian. I haven't had a Hawaiian. Hit him up. Like, oh I'm serious. God. He he always asks. He does it for free. Sends it right to your fucking door. Um, whatever you want. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, uh, when are you fixing that closet door? Gina says. The closet that's not broken, okay? I replaced the closet <laughs> door. That's uh, you should what you should ask is when are you going to throw out that closet yeah. door because that's trash. <laughs> that's fair. I want to know uh what was the hardest part or what was the hardest part of being a full-time streamer? Uh he says was, but what is the hardest part? Transitioning to from making like $160,000 a year with benefits and 401k matching and all that stuff mm -hmm. to making a tiny fraction of that and yep. having my wife who's a badass pharmacist be the breadwinner yeah and be and being okay with that okay that's a good answer that's a good answer to get in the tarkov content this late in the game would you recommend branching out and doing something out there or making similar guides and stuff uh like is already out there or i think it like is out there um if I could go back in time, starting as a variety streamer, yeah, is, and then is just so much better than all of the people who have been Tarkov people that have grown and have blown up. Mm -hmm. They're gonna get a rude awakening when they're sick of Tarkov and want to go switch, and the <laughs> people are only there for Tarkov, yeah. um, like myself. <laughs> uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's just yeah. the way it is. But so, at some point, you got to rip the bandaid off. The earlier, as the better. If you could start without a band-aid on mm -hmm. 
then you'll be better off and y it'll be harder to grow and slower to grow mm -hmm. but it'll it'll be like this forever rather than a steeper line that flattens out yeah and then hope that you get another steeper line yep 100 percent. favorite american fast food and why isn't it taco bell um taco bell is i mean some people's favorite fast food but american fa i mean five guys five guys is the goat Five guys to go. I think we have time for. Well, we. I mean, we have all the time in the world, but we'll we'll do two more questions. Let's see if anybody has any. I didn't scroll all the way up. If you guys have any questions for Veritas, ask away. We like doing these uh, chat questions because it allows you to get the get to know the creator a little more. Um, let me see. Did I miss anything? Uh, Gina says your YouTube is great. That's not really a question. Let me see. Thank you. Um. People saying five guys is the Earth flat? Ban that guy. He's banned. He's gone. Sorry, I'm gonna sorry, unban you. I'm, I'm unbanning like, him. I'm unbanning him. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. As far as I can tell, no, it's not flat. Yeah, we we got pretty pretty good evidence uh, with uh, lawnmower simulator in the background. Um, that's a good question. When is Veritas going to buy a car big enough to take that door to the landfill? <laughs> My Honda Civic will fit that. Yo, you got Civic? What year? I got Civic. Uh, I want to say like 19. I have a 2020. 2019. I have a 2020, so we're kind of twinning. Here you go. Here Let's you go. go. Yeah, we we love her. So what? Uh, I mean, no, I'm not gonna ask that question. Uh, opinions on milk? Uh, I, I I like at like age 20, I became lactose intolerant out of nowhere. Okay. Um, but there's uh, I think it's Fair Life. It's like non-lactose milk that's like extremely good mm -hmm. and their chocolate milk is bomb yeah so no, hashtag not sponsored but mm -hmm. fair life milk's where it's at okay well we got one uh probably sponsored question if i uh assume what iems are you using <laughs> uh six four audio uh-huh and uh is there possibly a link or code that you can kind of use to get some uh yeah, the best um, thing would be to go into my chat and type yeah. exclamation point I E M S. Yeah, some, I think uh, my my moderator Saint can do that for us real quick if he doesn't mind. Um, but with that being said, I appreciate you, Veritas. Thank you so much for spending three hours and forty five minutes of your time. I'm sorry if I if I interrupted anything, but I, I love every cinematic. minute of it, bro. Thank you. <laughs> I try, man. I try. I really appreciate you being on the podcast uh, once again, Veritas. Come find him on all platforms through YouTube's, whatever it may be. Um, don't take his, uh, Twitter takes that, or, or, well, don't take his, uh, top five games of all time that serious because, uh, we want peace in his life, okay? Um, with that being said, I appreciate you, uh, Veritas. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. We appreciate you. You have a good rest of your day. Uh, spend Thanks, it, brother. spend it doing something you love. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right. Peace. Peace, peace. Oh, man. We love Veritas. We love Veritas. I, I will point out before I end the recording for the podcast, um, Veritas is somebody that, um, like I said, he was one of the first streamers that I started watching and, uh, I don't know how to really express my thanks for, uh, him spending, you know, not only his time, but three hours of his time, three, four hours of his time to sit down and have a, have a, uh, have a have a conversation with me you know i mental health is very important to me and it's people like veritas that uh, allow me to do what i do every single day because he inspired people like myself so um yeah i appreciate you guys uh that is going to end re end the recording not end the live stream uh but i do want to point out don't forget to check out the coffee with gina gino twitter gina uh coffee with gino twitter uh coffee with gino um on twitter with uh one oh and uh, the Coffee with Gino podcast on TikTok is still banned for hateful speech. Um, yeah, if you're curious about that. With that being said, I love you guys. You guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. And as always, uh, stay safe, stay caffeinated. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.